All right. <clears throat> I don't want to talk about it. We don't want to talk about it. Not even a... Uh, <laughs> This is democracy manifest. Yeah, no, it was uh, it was an ugly it was it was an ugly day out there yesterday. It was it was an ugly day. Uh, it was an ugly day. I'll leave it at that. What I can tell you is that we're here, and that we are going to be doing a big old fat whopping transfer stream. I prefer not to speak. If I speak, I'm in trouble. Right? If I I prefer. I prefer not to speak. Carex, thank you so much for the 19 months, dude. Thank you for supporting the stream. Wow. Yeah, about uh, what happened on stream yesterday um, in terms of my football manager performance. It was, in a word, Spursy. It was. Andrew, thank you so much for the 25 months, dude. It was, it was, uh, it was Spursy. It was. It was. Spursian. Maybe that's the correct uh, tense of that. Oh, uh, which transfers are you looking for? Goalkeeper? Yes. Yeah, so we got, this is going to be a really, really interesting transfer stream. We should end up with a lot of money uh, to fire away with. Um... But yeah, we should end up with a lot of money to fire away with. I'm hoping we're able to. Uh, uh, we, 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 I'm probably going to look to sell a guy or two. Maybe a player or two that you would consider a, a surprise sale. To say the least. A player, of, or a player or two that you would consider a surprising sale. I, I am considering... Um, I am considering moves. I, I I know there are certain players that you guys have been hating on. I uh, that maybe those guys maybe those guys would be on the way out, or maybe it's somebody that you like that would be on the way out. But I what I can tell you is that everybody's position in the team will be reconsidered. Everybody's position in the team will be reconsidered. We will be we will be assessing who we feel we need to make a run at everything next season and who we feel we do not need to make a run at everything next season, and that is how we will be moving forward. Greeno, thank you for the four months. Thank you for supporting the stream, brother. Enjoy the bacon and the emotes, and thanks for spending five dollars of Jeff Bezos money. New system? Yeah. Uh, I think we'll be making some tweaks to our system. I actually spent a lot of this morning looking at the analytics of everything and uh those analytics they're unkind they're unkind to my tactic i think there is a certain amount of uh and in, in some people on youtube have pointed this out so i suppose to go ahead and say hi to youtube hello welcome to the stream today we're saying hi right off the top thank you guys for tuning in i'm um, on on the youtubes we're sorry you couldn't be here or maybe you're here for part of it. Maybe you appear later on today, but you're not able to watch everything. But hello, YouTube. Welcome to the stream. Uh, are we going full Brian? I I know, you know, well, yeah, well, you one, nobody can ever go full Brian the way that Brian went full Brian. Okay, like, I would love to do that. Thank you, Chad, for saying hi to YouTube. Making them feel like they were almost here, you know? Uh, going full Brian can be dangerous when you're not Brian, right? Sailing straight into the storm like that can be really dangerous when you're not Brian. Have I peeped the jobs now, dude? We're we're staying. I I made that announcement yesterday at the end of uh at the end of the season. There's absolutely no way we could leave on that note. There's absolutely no way we could leave the club on that note. Absolutely no way. That would be accepting defeat, dude. That would be willfully accepting defeat. So, hello from Australia. What's up, Raven Blood? What are you doing up, dude? What are you doing? Bayern's calling. They already rejected us a year and a half ago. Who is the most notable player that never got sainted? Depends on who you ask. Names I hear a lot. Yassi Toymanen, Kevin Barrientos. 
It's always a random Xander Hinneman shout in there. Uh, Jade Nadai gets a lot of, uh, yeah, there, there's the Jade Nadai already. Uh, Jade Nadai always gets a lot of shouts, a lot of love. Um, he was a heck of a player. Jumpman is not a saint. No, uh, he, he's not. The Luke Edwards, the single worst signing I have ever made. Uh, Nick Lima. Well, Nick Lima is just famous for getting more red cards than anybody. Hello from your walls. I'm in them. I thought I, I thought that was rats. Oh, but that seems like a comfortable spot, though. Hopefully, uh, you, do you have enough to eat? You want me to get you something? I can go grab something. Do we only have bad? No, bad boy and uh, Ilya Shkurin. Those are the two saints that have come out of the save this year, both from our nine trophy two year run with Orlando Pirates. Tom the Mullet Bullet Smith. Hideous, thank you for the 30 months. Don't worry, Luke Edwards will be showing his potential any day now. Hey, he's going to come through, dude. I still have faith. I lost faith in Luke Edwards the moment he signed. Most expensive signing in club history. His potential ability was a ruse designed to fool me. Where's Pape Montessar? We sold him. Uh, finally sold, I believe, in January. Finally got him to move. Um, but Ak Incha, he was important for a while. Ja Pinto is a saint. Uh, he is. He is a saint. So uh, Ja Pinto is in the Hall of Saints and everything. So is Ja Silva. It's the only, there's two Jaws in there. Luka Verbancic, absolutely not. Looking forward to the stream today. Need to pick me up? Good. It's a transfer stream. So great news. We can't lose any matches. Isn't that awesome? We literally can't lose a single match, dude. Because it's a transfer stream. <laughs> we can't bottle it today. Actually, we totally can. We You, you can bottle transfers, you know. You can bottle transfers. We can't bottle it, right? It's okay. It, it, it's uh, it's okay next season. Yeah, man. I we'll be fine. All right. So most important things we want to get money out that we feel like we we should be getting out right now. Uh, I am going to put a lot of money into our transfer budget up to thirty nine million and reduce our payroll impact a little bit. I'm gonna go like thirty five. Uh, so first, most important thing is we decided pretty early on, at least I felt like that we were not going to bring Guglielmo Vicario back um, as a as a goalkeeper for our team. Uh, he's getting paid a ton of money. He is 34 years old. He's starting to deteriorate physically as a goalkeeper. Um, how do you guys feel about that? How do you guys feel about letting Guglielmo go? Because what we're also going to do is we're going to lose uh, Kelleher. Our backup goalkeeper, his contract is also running out at the end of the year, which is fair. He's getting paid $4 million a year to be our backup goalkeeper. That's always bothered me. Uh, he is a nation-grown player. Uh, but that is, you know, that's something that we haven't done much with. We need a new one, 22 years old, etc. Okay, I'm seeing some cells in the chat. All right, that's something we can get behind. We do have one goalkeeper on his way in. 19-year-old Dane Kasper Gongsted. I like Kasper Gongsted. I don't know if we want to make him the starter this season or not. He has been starting for a few years in the Danish league already. Obviously a big jump up, but he's an incredibly professional individual. I expect he'll handle the transition well. Very technically skilled goalkeeper already. Um, now, if we go with a comparison on Googly Elmo here, what you'll notice is the big difference. So this, none of this matters. Ignore all of this. This is, this does matter. Composure, concentration, anticipation. Those do matter here, right? Now, technically speaking, at 19 years old with a lot of potential to grow into, Casper Gongstead, I would argue, is better than Googly Elmo. He's got better reflexes. He's got way better handling. He's got more size with the aerial reach. He's got 18 balance, 18 jumping reach. He is a technically much better shot stopper. A little worse on strength, which does matter on goalkeepers for some reason. But the issue is that as a 19-year-old that has not played at a world-class level like Vicario has for the last decade, his mental side of the game is just lower. That is the issue. 
How big is Vicario's wage? Uh, it might be worth keeping him as a mentor. I mean, it's worth thinking about. Maybe we float a new contract to him. Well, uh, I, I'm okay. Yeah, see, that's an issue. He wants to be an important player next season. The best I could do is cup goalkeeper. That's literally the best I could do. He doesn't want that. We're going to let him go. I, I don't want him to be our starting goalkeeper going into next season. Uh, he wants to. He, he want. He doesn't want to fade into a mentoring role, as I suspected. So that's that situation. Yeah, important players not happening. So there are a few other goalkeeping options. All right, I have carefully curated a short list. This is what you know we manage. There are two other guys. First one is Jonas Erbig, who is Red Bull Salzburg's goalkeeper. He's 27, lacks a bit of adaptability, but he's consistent. Favors big matches. Unflappable indicates a really high level of professionalism. Uh, Lighthearted is certainly a good personality. He's got great jumping reach, good one-on-one, solid reflexes. Doesn't have the same mental issues that somebody like Casper Gongstead has. Like, he's losing a lot less to Guglielmo Vicario there. He is a willing sweeper-keeper. Uh, but he is also 17 to 24 million. I think he makes a lot of sense. He's a guy that could walk right into the starting lineup and be good. Um, I, you know, I, I, I don't, oh, I don't have chat over on uh, the left side of the screen. You ever wanted to know how you do this? Boom, boom, drop down here, pop the chat out. Boom. Well, I'm pad my view numbers, dude. That is so sus. Why would I ever do that? Okay. Uh, but he, he, yeah, he's a good option. Kelleher, Bazunu, IR. Well, uh, Kelleher's great IRL, but yeah. This guy got a team of the week in EAFC. Wait, for real? I actually didn't really know who Jonas Erbig was. Uh, yeah, the little Z-ception dropping in. Now, the other option is fun. We could double down on young goalkeepers because there is another teenager who's playing at Newcastle Jets in Australia who's very good. Uh, he's got one cap for Australia. His release clause is 1.7 million. I, 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 yeah, he, um, the Aussie, Aussie, Aussie going is strong here. He's resolute, so he's got a good developmental personality. His jumping reach and aerial reach is an issue. He's only six feet tall, but, uh, he, yeah, he's, he's a very, very good goalkeeper. As, I mean, look, the team's interested. Arsenal, Chelsea, Newcastle, PSG, Benfica, Lorient. Like, this is a goalkeeper that is going to be a world-class goalkeeper. You can just tell. You just have that feeling. The moment you see him, you're like, yep, this dude's got 53 first-team appearances for Newcastle Jets already, a cap for the Australian national team. He's destined for the big time. Buy purely for Ozzy. Sign all three, loan one. Yeah, I mean, he is also 1.7 million, so it feels foolish not to throw in for him. We do have the limit of six foreign under-21 players that we can sign per season. We are already hitting one of those with Casper Gongstead signing this summer. Uh, so we have five left. I like to save at least one for January in case an incredible Wonder Kid pops up. Uh, so we have four spots for under-21 Wonder Kids that we can sign. That's the goalkeeper situation. So what would you guys... Uh, we're already getting Gongstead. We're going to let our two goalkeepers go. Kelleher and Guglielmo Vicario are both on the way out. I do want to take one look at trained in England, and then we'll go with goalkeepers. Just want to see what other options are around. Some dude named Spike Brits, who's a backup at Manchester City. Love that for him. Spike Brits. Mate Kovar. Not a lot of English. Where are the English keepers, man? Well, all the English goalkeepers. Well, these are the ones that are interested in playing for us, I guess. Uh, there's Dean Henderson. He's not very good either. He's the backup at Wolves with one cap. Just not going well there, Dino. No, so we have, okay, yeah, we have, uh, we have Gungstead, who is already signed, right? He's joining for, I think it was like 10 million. Um, and then there's the young Aussie, and then there's Jonas Erbig. If we signed all those guys, we'd be signing literally three goalkeepers, which is wild. Um... Jonas Erbig being a smarter player, though, is attractive. Um, and having more, like, seven German national team caps and having more of that kind of experience is nice. But he, he, I feel like he doesn't play. He's really only started playing in his career with, with Salzburg the last two and a half years. 
He was Dortmund's backup for a long time. Kind of wild. You see the US U 23s, uh, Drew France? Yeah, I did. Uh, a couple of late goals to pull out a tie. I think we're going to, you know, maybe we can get a bronze medal at the Olympics. That'd be fun. We need a stopgap solution. I also agree. I do agree with what somebody said earlier, though, that if we just started Gongstead this year, I think he would get pay. He would pass the level that Vicario was at in no time. Because the only issue is really his anticipation and composure, and he has, he's going to get a ton of match exposure, and he's incredibly professional. I think Gongstead would very quickly become a better goalkeeper than what we had in Guglielmo Vicario. He's also very adaptable. Let's not overlook that. This dude's going to step right into the team and be able to play at his very best right away. Do we want to burn the money on Jonas Erbig just to get another guy in? Or do you just buy the Aussie and use the Aussie as like a cup goalkeeper and then save money on not spending $20 million or whatever on Jonas Erbig? Well, an older backup, maybe not the worst idea, but why not have two teenage goalkeepers and then just embrace the pain that will cause? Steph, thank you for the 500 bits. Sign the Aussie, loan him out, and play down under on Spotify. Not necessarily in that order. Love the thoughts, though, dude. I love that. All right, I think uh, I think we'll go after the Aussie then. I have talked myself into having two teenage goalkeepers. Please clip this and play it back for me when I complain about them choking in a big match or something. Jonas Erbig is there in January if we need him, right? If we feel like these guys aren't ready, but I'm going to go for Luka Yash now. But definitely clip that and, and remind me that I made that decision on my own. That was good, dude. That's an A-. minus. Mr. Choke, I like that. Thank you for the 33 months. Good dad joke right there. Gang Gang UK, thank you for the 13 months as well. Thank you guys for supporting the stream. Enjoy the bacon. Enjoy the emotes. Googly Elmo is all we need. Oh, I'm sorry. I he he wants to still be an important player, and he's get you know he wants to be paid a lot more than these uh, young guys that I think are going to come in. And you know, Gonstead could be our goalkeeper for the next 16 years, right? If like. If he ends up being able to develop his mental attributes, he could be our goalkeeper for the next 16 years. No doubt at all. So let's take a look at our target potential center backs. Um, we are still possibly interested in Ben El Hajoj. Uh, he's up on that list for $27 million, which does feel a little expensive. Uh, why are we on selection info? That feels like the dumbest thing to be on. I didn't know this guy could play center back. And then there's Stoyan Alexov. Oh, a cool 61 to 89 million. It's easy. What about a, a little ball winner? A little ball winning midfielder? Marco Palma can apparently play uh, in that spot. Well, now his uh, asking price has gone way up, so never mind. Matias Fuentes. I don't know why this dude's not in Europe yet. He must be asking for crazy. Oh, he is at Alain. He's not in Europe, but he's in the, you know. The East. Then there's Glauber. I like Glauber. 17 years old. Playing at Girona. My, 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 my Girona. Let me get another scouting report on him. And then Shea Geta, the 16-year-old from uh, Mexico that nobody can sign because he doesn't want to go anywhere. This is Lucas' character. Who is this Lucas character? I'm just trying to identify our targets. I'm, gl I'm glad you love the Zealandism. That has been a lot of fun. Oh, guess who's here? Guess who's here, chat? Was that Mark Rodriguez I just saw? There's Kieran Tell. He might not, like, if we end up with some extra money, I wouldn't be opposed. He's developed pretty well. He's uh, that 19 off the ball. That's doing things to me. I'm feeling things emotionally. That 19 off the ball is uh, scrumdiddlyumptious right there. 
This dude is a bona fide finisher. He's got me licking my chops. And then, yeah, there he is. There's the guy. Never heard of this guy before. He's actually such a solid center back. I, it's kind of crazy. He's such a, he's such a solid center back. If he had 20 jumping reach, I'd be all over this guy. And the fact that he's 6'8 and doesn't have 20 jumping reach is alarming to me. I like that he tries first time shots with 12 first touch. That's just such a bad thing to have. Thoughts in the Taunton game getting postponed this weekend? That's probably very bad for Taunton because they need all the money from all the matches they can play. Uh, Tim Prescott, that's a 19-year-old Englishman who also... Very well-rounded. Okay, I like I like his attribute distribution. This is good Holy Trinity, but also with the crossing. Uh, work rate's a little low, but good athlete with good size. You are, you're you're going to get my attention. Injury-prone, though. Fringe player at Leeds. Sebastian Kirschbaum. This dude just feels like Macintosh all over again. Calvin wants $10 million a year, which bothers the hell out of me. 20-year-old Mexican international Eduardo Trujillo. We're going to move him to... And now he should stay here. All right, Mahmoud Yahia. It's like one of Egypt's rising stars. And then Dion Drena Kakulovic. Hard to ignore 16 first touch, 18 finishing. But I'm about to ignore it. All right, right wings, we've got Buonani. We would have to eat a massive wage if we decided to adopt Buonani, but he does offer that inside forward off the right. We were a little short on last time. And then there's Romario Gila, who can technically, I would say, play both wings, but he doesn't have that going for him right now. He also is, I believe, nation trained in the UK, which could make the... No, he's too slow. He's too slow. What am I doing? He's too slow. Mark and Indrick, big man, little man up front. Ooh, I like the way you're thinking. I like, I, I, you know, I like the way you're thinking. I feel like a lot of these guys aren't making the team better. I don't know. I think Buonani would make the team better. Trujillo is just a guy that is a really good deal in case we need to sell another wing. Rosario Renai, Lurich Cabongo is like the most expensive guy on planet Earth. Rosario Renai is very, very out and out winger. Oh, my lunch is on the way. Let's go! Florin Dragon. Then there's Richard Vig. Again, does not make the team better. Definitely not. Just a, a pacey winger. Very high, high octane running wing. And then Marilo Goals. Fair, fair, dude. I mean, you might as well have the goals in your name, uh, but he lacks the adaptability. All right, now we clear the target acquired and kind of just look at everybody, and uh, we'll sort by guys that are interested. There's Dominic Pavlak. Wait, this dude's 93 million. I think we've talked about this, but this dude being 93 million is an instant sign. If we can get 93 million to rub together, I'm sorry, we're signing Dominic Pavlak. I like. I'm sorry, this dude is is an instant sign. Like, literally, no question, outstanding player. Um, he has a 93 million Champions League release clause. Please tell me they didn't get Champions League. Oh, my God, I think they did. No. They got it by a point. Uh, oh, they were in Champions... Is this accurate? I don't know if he's available for this 93. I'm going to put that right at the top of the priority just in case we have like a, a crowded priority list. Put those guys up there. Is that accurate? Yeah, I don't think that's accurate. 
I don't think we can get it for $93 million. They were in the Champions League this year, too. Send a bid? I don't have that kind of money right now. We have to wait for our money to come in in this, uh, this offseason. We will have it. We will have that kind of money. We just don't have it right now. I sound like I'm trying, I'm like in uncut gyms or something. Oh, I will have it. <laughs> I promise I'll have the money. And then there's Miguel Lejeuze, who I, I have long held an affinity for Miguel Lejeuze. An intelligent, technical midfielder. Plays no defense, which really fits in with our team pretty well. Fits in with our team super well. Plays absolutely no defense. You know, he's, uh, you know, he's, a, he's a tasty looking player. We, we've attempted to sign him before and fumbled it, so I'm glad we've done that. No more bloody midfielders. Hey, but the other guy's a midfielder. And once we get all of our money in, I think we'll have... <sighs> No, I'm not loaning him back. He's coming over here, man. He's coming over here. All right. Negotiating with the goalkeeper. Not going to put a first choice goalkeeper thing in there, but I will put the backup goalkeeper thing in there. Please. Okay. You're not super impatient guy. Yeah. That, that deal look all right to you, Luca. That deal look uh, A-OK -okay to you, brother. McCann, thank you for the five months. I appreciate you. Thank you for supporting the stream. Just lost my friend. Oh, I'm sorry. So that's my first Champions League final with Frederick's dad. Kind of demotivating, but watching your streams helps me motivate to keep grinding. Hell yeah, dude. Am I in the dugout? No, I, I, I did not know I was in the dugout. Uh, okay, failed to adapt his game. Fair enough. So we're going after Luka Yash. This is the time to go after Wonder Kids. If, uh, if we feel so inclined, this is the time to go after Wonder Kids. Um... Yeah, see, we just updated. They're, they're in the Champions League, so that's not a thing anymore. Damn it, man. That would have been awesome. But they were in the Champions League all year, so that was just a really old scouting report on Dominic Pavlak. That that's like a, that was a big time opportunity, though. If we if we had financially been in a position to go for that, that's a that was a big time opportunity. That's a very good player. Crones, thank you so much. <laughs> For the prime, dude. I appreciate you supporting the stream. Enjoy your bacon and your emotes. I'll see you in the subsection of the Discord, all right? It's valid for one more. Yeah, it'll never be valid. It, 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 the, the, the Pavlok thing will never be valid. Because the way the Champions League... I knew it was wrong. Because the way the Champions League thing works is if, the, if, you, if Dortmund's in the Champions League, that release clause is not active. So Dortmund is in the Champions League next year. They were in the Champions League this year. That release clause is just not active. It is an inactive release clause. It is only active if they're not in the Champions League and you are. That is the only time that that release clause is active at all. And um, yeah, it's not. So yay. Oh, that would have been scary, dude. You might have had to watch an ad. <laughs> Thank you for the nine months. Congrats on your Twitch child. Thanks for supporting the stream. I'm going to assume yesterday didn't go well. We don't talk about that. Uh, we, you know, we, we don't talk about that. So I'm going to surprise you guys with something. There's one player that I think I do want to sell and you guys might hate me for. Okay. And I apologize for uh for for the, for me wanting to sell this player because i know some of you probably won't like it because i also love this player i just feel like it's probably time i'm thinking we're selling Giannis Constantelius i know i know I know. I know. I know. I love a lot of the stuff that he does. I love the fact that he plays across the whole front line and can step into the central midfield, and he covers a lot of different spaces for the team.
but I also let me let me show you something. I was looking around at my team the other day. Let me show you something. We already have a guy that can do a lot of these jobs. Okay, let me uh, let me find let me let me, let me find him. We already have a guy that matches up pretty well here. Now, here's a guy that uh, that's already on our team and matches up pretty freaking well. I, I know we're getting some Zealand out going. I'm just saying, hear me out on this one. Right? Hear me out on this one. And, you know, Belchior Cornelia wasn't getting himself involved in the team all that much, even though I think he offers a lot. Kaimo, Kaio, thank you for the three months. Do we sell the Greek freak Giannis Constantelius? Giannis <laughs> or Giannis? The sad thing is I love this dude. The sad thing is I really do like Giannis Constantelius. He's done a great, he's done great work for us. He's been on the team for two years. Like I signed him right when I got here. Very influential player, but he was a little worse this, this past year than he was the year before. And I feel like in our rotation, we might be able to level up a little bit. But, um, like another thing is if you looked at our recent matches, like Giannis was, he was in really bad form. He was also in really bad form. So let's explore perhaps an asking price that would be acceptable to Giannis. He'd be happy with $65 million. We'll set that as an asking price, and we will explore an offer out for Giannis Constantelius to see if we can get 60 You know, I, I would probably take anything like $55 million and up. Oh, the U-20 World Cup's going on. Send it! Yeah, I love that the entire Vanuatu national team is on the move. Oh. Oh, no. I think the person is... I have a difficult address to deliver to. I think the person is confused. Hold on, I gotta go find my food. Give me a second.
I have my food. You guys grooving out? Sorry, take a sec. I have one of those addresses where there's like multiple doors that it could be New York vibe. And uh, so sometimes people go to like the wrong door. I just got a sandwich, by the way. I know you guys are concerned. Yeah, see, we weren't planning your downfall. Wait, what was happening? <laughs> Brian's like messaged me in the hammer chat if you want to be if you if you want to be my disciple. Brian's popping off. All right, we were just looking at the Vanuatu U twenties, dude. Casual day at the office there. Just the Vanuatu U twenties. There is a fifteen year old starting at center back for the Saudi uh, team. You have my undivided attention. That's mainly just because I failed math class. No, that's a lie. I never failed math class. I did, however, get a C in geometry. That's okay. I was still smart. Emphasis on the past tense. Oh, this is the group right here. We've got the Mexican Golden Generation, Portugal, and Argentina all hanging out in the same group. All right. This is where we're going to find our superstar wonder kids right here. I've got the highest powered scouting department you've ever freaking seen. You've never even seen anything like this before. We scout so efficiently, it's not even fair. The 16 year old starting for the English team. Re oh my no. Come on. These come on, man. Come on. Where's that guy in my intake? fair fair play dude dude fair play you know totally fair play uh very very fair uh that's that's a b plus for me i have given you that rating through gritted uh, through gritted teeth you have to keep it a low ha yikes Absolutely massive yikes there. Sabertooth, thank you so much for the 10 months. So thank you for supporting the stream. Just make sure you keep it aloha. Uh, the Memphis Depay thing, thank you for the bits. I didn't know that he was part of the bailout of Danny Alves. Memphis Depay has been on some weird stuff recently, man. Yeah, he was like talking about how he, him and... Him, he's like still good friends with Quincy Promus, even though Promus is like dodging jail time in the Netherlands. Like <laughs> the pie's just on some weird stuff.
Hey, Noodle Soup, thank you for the prime. Default, thank you so much for the tier one. You got to see a geometry. No wonder I've never seen you use a diamond midfield. Harsh, but true. Harsh, but fair. Totally fair, honestly, on that. Uh, we have drummed up some interest from all Etihad and Lons, who both definitely have the money to go get Giannis if they want. Uh, we also have a lot of uh, interest in a lot of our players, so I'm very curious to see like what transfer opportunities are presented to us. My only concern at this stage of the window is you want to get on those wonder kids you think a bunch of other teams are going to kind of jump in on. You want to get in on those types of guys early. Uh, yeah, season and review. Wow, can't wait. This is going to be great. Signing of the season with Simone Scotta. That's wild. Um, I guess he was only 30 million. And he did score 14 goals this year. Yeah, well, you know. Enrique was a B minus. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was a pretty good signing. I mean, the Kazu Kanda signing was amazing. That guy is clearly great. Why was he the signing of the season? You only said it was a C plus. Yeah, there's there's the look at our our league form, and you can see where we we had that like absolute purple patch right in the middle of the season, and then. It was the uh, four losses in five. Now, granted, it was away against Villa and Newcastle, who both finished top four, and Arsenal obviously won the league at home, but we weren't able to deliver the goods. All one goal losses. We did not lose a match by... Oh, sorry, we lost at City 2 nothing very early in the season. Every other loss we had was by one goal. That draw away to Leicester also haunting. Loss away to Everton. Haunting. Yeah, Arsenal also dropped two points in the entire new year, which is what allowed them to sprint up the table and grab the league by a point. And that was brutal. But you know what? Semi-final of the Champions League, uh, runner-up in the FA Cup, semi-final of the League Cup. We uh, we played basically every match that we could except for the final of those two competitions. So Second was most sold, Jersey, then Shikichi, then Red. Rejevich was third. The Bosnian, not even a full-time starter. All righty. Uh, Mujahid Kaya was also fifth, even though he signed in January. Club is still not a full five-star club. Probably needed to win something for that to happen. I won manager of the month in September and December, and most assists by a player in a season. Dude, I'm literally looking at selling Giannis. He had 16 assists this year, most by a player in a season. Must have had a lot of assists in the Champions League. And we broke the record for the highest fee paid to get in Jarrell Hato for the prime of his career as a center back. Uh, which is great. That was a lot of money, but that was kind of a we were chasing titles type transfer. Uh, and obviously we came up short on that. But I'm happy we have Hato because we've just got a great center back in the team for, you know, the rest of his career. Leading scorer was Indrik. He had 20 goals in all competitions. Uh, he also had the highest average rating. Fan player of the season was Javi Guerra. All right. That was that. Supporter profile, we've gained more core and Fairweather fans, lost family and hardcore fans. Sad. Sad. Uh, they're delighted and pleased with all the various goals we have. High tempo possession, attacking football. Uh, I'm assuming I'm not going to be able to negotiate this anyways. I mean, I'd love to, but I don't think I can. So do not sign players over the age of 30. Sign players under the age of 20 for the future. Who's calling me? Oh. Okay. I think I've been added to one of those weird WhatsApp groups that's like uh, a problem. Huh.
Why? Why even have the negotiate option? Why even have the negotiate option? All right, plans for next season. Hi, guys. Uh, like talk for our Ames Premier League next season. Uh, we can challenge for the title. Everybody's cool with that. Yep. Um, okay, that's it. That's, ba yeah, that's basically it. Off into the off season we go, full of optimism. Training camp destination. Uh... China, U.S., Singapore, Austria, or Bourgogne, France. What do we think? Those are the options down here. Are we going to China? The Estados Unidos? Huh. I mean, objectively, like, what's the better choice in the game? Is it's about growing reputation and growing, like, merch sales, right? What's the better choice in the game? It's the U.S., right? We'll go to the U.S. Screw it. I'm an American coach. I'm the main draw. Everybody wants to come to see the best American coach that ever lived. Hell yeah. Really? Our training facilities have been downgraded and he's totally not going to improve. He's not going to approve an upgrade. The only reason I did it immediately is there will be an option to be like to keep up with certain standards or whatever. And I'm going to hit that option and hope that it works. But I, uh, I do not think Daniel Levy will approve the upgrade to our facilities. I think that he is um, anti that for sure. Oh, don't worry. We're already signing that Aussie. We've literally already sent him the contract. Have no fear. It's March. Um, I would say not until August. I mean, if you think about, like, the, the, the way the calendar runs, like, the game comes out in November, dude. We're, like... Not even halfway into playing FM24 right now. So FM25, while it's awesome, it's going to be on Unity, and obviously it's going to be a gigantic deal and everything. It's still pretty far off into the future, right? It's still out there in the future, not, not around the corner. Why do they think Omer is so bad compared to all these other guys? Looks very competent. Oh, there's Unai Simone. I could go sign a 33-year-old if I wanted. Manuel Locatelli, C.D. Jata, Adam Karabet, Marquinhos, but like other Mark. This guy's 32 million for a player that is... I would say worth a lot more than that. It's a, it's a release clause to foreign clubs to get him out of Turkey, and I'm sure he's going to end up somewhere better. I don't think he's good enough to, like, start for us, but Newcastle and Chelsea are both sniffing around the goods.
All right. So he said, I hope they make Football Manager e uh, harder next year. Football Manager is already a very hard game. I, I talk about this a lot. Uh, but Football Manager, like, like any game, it gets a lot easier the more that you play it. But if you ever watch somebody play Football Manager for the first time or try and learn what's going on, Football Manager is a really, 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 really difficult game. Like, really, really difficult game. Um, to, to learn, to be good at, it's just easier than real life, and that bothers some people. If Football Manager is too easy for you, you need to create more intense challenges for yourself. Uh, because it is also kind of a sandbox game. It's it's like Minecraft, but soccer. Like, you can create any, you know, wall or obstacle in your way that you feel like would make your life harder. Like a football manager. Oh, come on. Develop the best youth system in the world. I'm trying. Yeah, but you need to, you need to make sure that you have... Uh, you have the appropriate amount of roadblocks if the game feels too easy to you. Where's your, your how about your youth teams? We don't really have anybody good down there. Uh, having failed to achieve some short-term goals, dude, I... Okay, I'm just gonna decline. We're just gonna hang up the... Oh, the connection's cutting out. Oh. Is that Crusader King? Uh, they, he just turned down improving our trading facilities. I hate it here. Is that Crusader Kings is a hard game? It's not, dude. That's the easiest paradox game out there. A football manager is harder than Crusader Kings, 100%. As somebody that has played both a ton... Hey, Rapids! Thank you for the two months, dude. Jay Galder, thank you so much for the four months as well. Thank you for supporting the stream. I hope you're having a good one. Enjoy the bacon. Enjoy the emotes. Make sure you get in the subsection of the Discord. Oh, Steph, that's a good spot to be in. You're killing it. Tebow, thank you for the eight months as well. Bob's, thank you for the six months. And the question to kind of set it all off there. Yeah. But I know Crusader Kings, despite the fact that I accidentally killed my wife that one time, is <laughs> is easier than uh, than Football Manager. I mean, Football Manager and Crusader Kings are both games that if you play it specifically to conquer as quickly as possible, you've got to either make it unnecessarily hard on yourself once you really know how to play the game, or you have to just create scenarios that you are playing inside of, like a youth-only save or something. He was really cheap. Let me take another look at him. Never mind. And it was an accident, dude. You can literally watch the clip. I was not happy that my wife had died in Crusader Kings. It was a very, very bad roll on that particular situation that we ended up in. All right. We ended up in a situation. We got a bad roll. It wasn't great. Didn't love it. That dude's getting paid $44 million a year. That is insane. Are Man City just letting this guy go at the end of the year? I mean, I guess. Is he... Did they, did they raise him over here? They did. Okay, I mean... Not the best player ever, but he is not bad. Um, and he's not asking for, like, crazy money either. Can I just get him for free? Yep. All right. You have piqued my interest, my good man. I don't want Jordan Minchella. He, no. Enzo, I still at Chelsea. What a career, man. Etienne Tipple. I mean... We could only dream of somebody having an awesome name like that in real life. Yosuke Tanabe. I do already have one Japanese player, but I don't think that guy's good enough. Hey, Brian, thank you for gifting a sub, dude. 
the field team leader. Enjoy the bacon. Enjoy the emotes. Be sure to say thank you to Brian. Thank you to Brian for supporting the stream with kindness. Here, bring it in. Ryan, thank you for the six months as well. I appreciate you. Free monies. Mm. Yeah, this is uh, this has got a big free money vibe. That is more money than I wanted to pay him. That is more money than I would have liked to be on this list with a yearly salary raise as well. How bad do you want to stay around a Premier League team, Daniel? There's a lot to like about old Daniel Colombo here. As long as he is willing to take uh, no money. Thank you, Daniel. Sorry, how long was that? I thought it was three. Yeah, okay. I can live with a three-year deal on Daniel Colombo. That works for me. Right, I get English is hard to learn, but it is easy to learn in this game, Marcelo Enrique. Only has basic English after his first intensive language course. Five team players are called. Is there some big tournament going on this summer? Uh, Rico Lewis is overlooked by England manager Jose Mourinho. I freaking forgot about that. England manager Jose Mourinho. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Ah, 2031 is not a Euro's year. They're even years. There's nothing big this summer. It's just a summer window call up, I guess. Oh, we have an extension clause in uh, Kelleher's contract. Uh, and then there's Kerbishley. I think we're just going to let him go. Vicario left out of Italy's plans again. Damn you! Oh, Lassessi's coming back. I thought we were trying to sell him. Yeah, I'm not too knowledgeable on the work permit situation. Also think we're just going to set Googly Elmo for release. How's that sound? You cool with that? We move from Tottenham? No, absolutely not. We are not. The little dots, thank you for the 20 months. We are, we are, we are not moving. Okay. We're staying at this club and we are going to figure it out. All right. Well, there's the Champions League final. Of course they want it. In extra time, obviously. It's Real Madrid. Champions League winners. Beat us in a 97th minute penalty. Absolutely absurd, I say. Whatever, dude. Whatever. How old is Mourinho at this point? Uh, it's only eight years in the future. Less than that. Or seven years in the future. Premier Division Player of the Month. Dang it. Young player of the month, head coach of the month. I was third somehow. No idea how that happened. Champions League players of the season. Do we have anybody on here? Oh, yeah. Vicario was second. Nice.
Oh, we got nearly $5 million from club membership fees. Got hit with a tax bill. No, we already got our budgets. This is our new scouting budget, which just keeps letting us scout the world. Ford provided a $15 million cash injection. Sick, dude. Oh, we oh we just got our season turnover money. Oh, nice. All right. Season turnover money just hit. Sick. Probably should have waited to ask for the training facilities. I was hoping we would be able to talk, but he didn't even let me talk to him about the facilities. He was just like, actually, no. Actually. Okay, so Gongstead joins us on the 10th. The transfer window opens on the 10th. I don't know when we're going to get the money from Hawkeye Arner Haroldson and Santiago Jimenez. That's the money we're waiting for. Uh, we're going to get two checks for that. Once the transfer window opens, the business is going to hit. Now, before we get there, I might want to put an offer out for another wonder kid. Erbig was goalkeeper of the season in Austria. I mean, that's not that hard, all right? Luka Yash has accepted the transfer. That's great news. The uh, wonder kid goalkeeper from Australia, mate. Saw Hammer and Macintosh. Ooh, we just signed those guys up. Them brothers were just signed. Uh, surprised and nervous. I've never seen that. Surprised and nervous to be a part of the Argentina setup. Everybody and their mother is interested in Miguel Lejeuze. I am, uh, I'm going to go ahead and make a move here. We're going to, uh, we're going to make a play on Miguel Lejeuze here. I know he's a midfielder, but everybody seems to be aware that that dude's a beast. Uh, squad player. <laughs> Let's go, baby. Isaiah, Isaias, Isaias, Rivas. He does not like me. Ah, he does not like me. Now, if you remember, the last time I negotiated with this guy, I did this and I did this and then I just hit submit. So what we're going to do is we're going to do that and that and then just raise his uh, wage. There we go. Now we, we have avoided certain death. All right, Miguel issues. The offer is in. For the 18-year-old Argentine from Newell's Old Boys that everybody seems to love. And, you know, honestly, I do too. I mean, what an absolute beast. I mean, what a, what a big hulking man. He's not really, he's not a particularly large individual, but... My scout retired. Well, that's no fun. All right, guys, we're we're missing one. You know, I only have twenty nine scouts now. I'm basically starving. Come on, who's there? Marcus Pilawa is the chief scout of Bayern Munich. Now you're just a scout, Jose Mayorga. You're just a scout at Manchester United. I can steal you, Jose. I can steal you, and you can come be a scout for me instead. You ever think about that? You ever think about how great your life would be if you did that?
How will I live with less than the 30 scouts that I require? Tottenham making an offer for Luka Yash and all, oh, yeah, all, all them boys right there. All them boys. All them boys right there. Yeah, that sucks. Although the offer is not going to trigger his release clause, so hopefully he's going to spend a little more time looking at us and going, you know, I want to go play at Tottenham Hotspur. That looks like a place where I'll be able to go and develop into a a brilliant player that everybody knows that I should be, you know? My scouts take up half the stand. Yeah, they've got their whole, they've got their own wing of the entire, like, Tottenham facility. 30 scouts just hanging out in one room, 30 computers all facing each other in a circle, bandying different names around. Like, ah, oh, maybe we should sign this guy. Is it going to tell us on the calendar when that transfer goes through? Oh, uh, yeah. Haroldson joins Atalanta. Basuma contract expires. Beginning of our preseason is apparently June 30th. You get literally a month off. It's crazy. A lot of people are saying Indrik didn't gel this year. Literally led us in goals. And you know what? King Kazu can start pushing him for playing time if he's really getting that bad. Because Kazu developed a lot over the past year. He got better. He got more confident on the field. My organ just said yes. So we did just sign our 30th scout poached from Manchester United staff. Because we're a bigger club, obviously. I mean, and everybody knows it. So Zakiru Ziggy is, of course, on loan at Court Trike. Oh, he, wait, wait, wait. Oh, he made an appearance for Ghana. No. Oh. Ah, uh, tracks. Nice. Yeah, the real, somebody hit on it. The real flop this year, dude, was McIntosh. McIntosh flopped real hard this year. We brought him in in January, nothing. Bellarmino got a goal. All right, Daniel Colombo, attacking midfielder and right-sided winger. I don't know if he's really going to play a lot this season. I feel like I'm signing him maybe just to loan him out and try and tap into some of that potential he apparently has. But this is a dude we're signing for free that has three Argentina caps. I feel like there's value there. I feel, I feel like there's value there. All right, here is young goalkeeper Luca Iash. Uh, except he is Aussie, so we'll just call him Luca Jash, unless he's got second nationality somewhere. Nope. All right, Luca Jash. Uh, and Luca is very, very cheap and very, very hyped up goalkeeping prospect to be coming on over. So come on over, Luca. How did Mikey Moore do at Milan? I mean, I know he was playing because we played against him. So it's not like they spent $120 million on Mikey Moore and were then kind of blindsided by a guy that couldn't really play much. Spins, thank you for the six months. Yeah, I find the more things change, the more they stay the same. I always believed that was a very poignant piece of uh, advice there. Um, 
Yeah. Stevie, thank you for the three months, dude. Thank you for supporting the stream. Yeah, uh, that was what I was thinking. Oh, laws declare interest in Constantelius for 65 million. See, there is money out there for us to uh us to get for 28-year-old Giannis Constantelius. I know he's in the prime of his career, right? But it just felt like maybe we were just missing out a little bit there. Kabishly, we're gonna get some money for a guy who I was just gonna let leave for free, which sounds great. Sounds like I'm stealing almost. Um I really wish we could get the money from all of these loans that we handled now. I feel like that would be awesome. We don't want to lose. We want to extend an Echo Romo's loan. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to do that. Thanks. I would love that. Uh, there is one like super text based one. I think it's like college. I don't know. I've tried to get into it, but it's like too text based for me to draft day sports college basketball. I have like, there's no way I have 76 hours. I I haven't played it in probably f three or four years, but it, it was, it was a little too text based for me. It was, it was tough for me to get into. So definitely I would love a, uh, an FM style game for college sports. They're making a college American football game, which is going to be awesome. I hope what that means is they're going to make a college basketball game as well, because that would also be awesome. Um, they used to make those, but then they stopped. Uh, I'm open to selling anybody for the right price, right? If, if lawns show up with 65 million in a brown paper bag for Giannis Constantelius, I will happily take that. And I will make the sale. Yash Gongstead and Colombo. Welcome to our two new goalkeepers. 19-year-old Casper Gongstead and 19-year-old Luka Jash. Yo, Jones, thank you so much for the prime, dude. Nathaniel, thank you for the seven months. And uh, hopefully that helps. Hopefully that helps scratch the itch. Let's go, dude. Goodbye. We've signed the wonder kid everybody wanted, Miguel Lejeune. He's already a genius. He's already playing for Argentina. Some are saying he's the greatest wonder kid in the world. He's professional. Young Goko, thank you for the prime. Thank you for spending $5 of Jeff Bezos' money. Oh, a wonderful. And the value on this signing. This dude we could turn around and sell for $70 million tomorrow. Especially after one season of hanging around a Premier League team, this dude is skyrocketing. Okay, but we did just get our huge report from the U-20 World Cup. So you guys ready? Holy Moses. That's a lot of potential for Dries of Irida. Uh, You suck. Actually, you're really not that bad, Godfried. But I'll just leave you. Uh, Casper Levens, you are that bad. Jean Baptiste Herze, I feel like I've looked at you before and I had the exact same thought I do now, which is no. Adnan Gyoshi. Okay, we already said no to you. Rahul Roy. Mustafa Yahioi. Yahioi. I don't even know where we're going with that. Sim Vandenbosch, nice. Guy Damore, Matteo Dinunzio. I mean, sick name, dude. All right, Belgium, you're not really giving me any of the business here. 
I am. Uh, I'm not. I'm not buying. I'm not liking this. Ooh, Colombia though. We know what Colombia can do. We know what Colombia is capable of. Not that. That dude's bad. Um, no. You know, Colombia, you're really disappointing me here. There's got to be somebody, Colombia. There. Ha I'm sorry. I refuse to live in a world where there are zero good young Colombian players. That's not the football manager I know and love. Please. All right, he's not bad. Sergio Manrique. Fine. At least you're finding people that I'm not going to, like, insta not interested in. So you're making progress. I, I, I think that's what they've done. I think we now live in a world where there are no good young Colombians. I mean, that dude's 17, like, maybe, but... Australia, I think we might have already gotten the one. I think we might have already gotten the one. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'll give that guy the, the chance that he deserves there. Excluding the top four leagues, what is your favorite league to play in? I don't think it is one of the top four leagues. I don't know. I think the most fun to be had the most quickly would be like German third division. Because you can sign anybody, which is awesome. Like, I mean, it's the, the, the German roster rules are so lax that if you ever wanted to have like a really fun save where you, you I, my, team building is like my favorite thing about football manager. Like, you know, going and finding players and building a team. You know, however you do that. Like, I love this kind of deep batch scouting and assessing player attributes and how they're going to combine and whatever. Uh, and so, I in, in Germany, there is nothing that blocks you from just being able to build a team as well as you can. That is fun for me. I enjoy that. That's my idea. Like, you know, if you're like, what's an ideal date to take Zealand on? Just put him, just lock me in the third German division for an evening. I'm going to have a wonderful time. Just in case anybody was looking for any ideas. Uh, do you ever take your shirt list with you when you move jobs? Yes. Uh, you have to re -scout. I've learned over the course of this save, because I haven't played a save like this in a really long time. You have to scout your short list again uh, in order to, like, trigger it refreshing. So you do need to fire up your new scouting department whenever you move jobs and, like, really sit down and go over. You, you have to, you know, tell them to go find people. Um, yeah, work permits. I feel like I've got that under control. What is this? Transfer windows opening. Uh, yeah, there's area of the side we're looking to improve. I think we're going to be able to make improvements there. We're signing two goalkeepers right now. Three new signings confirmed. Okay, in 28 days, somebody remind me to call him back. I forgot we'd loaned him back to Copenhagen. In 28 days, can somebody please remind me to recall our starting goalkeeper for this year? That would be great. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, Daniel Colombo. People are like, why are you signing Daniel Colombo? Because I think he's good. What do you mean, why am I signing Daniel Colombo? I think he's got game, man. Their feature in FM where you can have a reminder on a certain day. Yeah, it's called Reminders, and I'll go ahead and make that um, 20, 30. 
So we just need to go like nine days in here. <laughs> Recall your keeper, bro. There you go. Uh, Mark Rodriguez. That's not good. This is not good. Golian, thank you for the two months. How am I doing today? I'm all right. I day got a little worse though, because Mark Rodriguez is bitten. He's getting fished for here. All right, so hear me out, man. Hear me out. I'm thinking installments. You know, like fifty-eight million in installments. Yeah, that's a nice seventy-five. Uh, they're like, dude, we'll totally take that offer into further consideration. I'm like, all right. Looks like they're trying to decide what offers they want to accept. At least we're in the sweepstakes. That would be $25 million up front, $50 million over the next three years. That is something that we could absolutely afford, distributing the payment. Uh, oh, sweet. More scouting reports from the U-20 World Cup. Ibrahim Al Harbi, that's uh, it's actually pretty high uh, for a guy that's free as well. So, go ahead and take a peek there. McKenzie McCurdy, uh, he's not very good, but allegedly he could be. Allegedly, apparently my team has no knowledge of Scotland. I was looking at that earlier. Literally no knowledge of Scotland at all. Uh, all right, Senegal, I am not optimistic after this early barrage here. It's your entire U-20 World Cup team, just bad 15-year-old players. How did you guys even make it? There we go, looking for somebody that has at least a decent rating in the eyes of my scouts. There we go, there's an 18-year-old that is definitely way better than what his uh, transfer value is at because of his pace right there. Burhan Atajik. Now we're talking. All right, we may be able to get something out of Iran. They have a weirdly high youth rating. And that weirdly high youth rating has given us nothing! Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do. I would love a ball winning midfielder to just kind of spawn in right now because we're really not getting those and it's not great because we are going to lose Eves Basuma this year we know that's coming he is he is getting too old. We can no longer sustain with Eves Basuma as our starting ball winner. Marcelo Enrique is okay to step into that spot, but I would like somebody else. Please and thank you. We need 31 scouts to get Scotland. Dude, so true. Okay, that's pretty standard offer, apparently, for Zeno Kerbishley is all you. All you, man. Yeah, but when you go to, like, our uh, our coverage, like, we just have no knowledge. Oh, we do now. I swear I was looking at it earlier today. Oh, that's regions. If you look at nations, we don't. We have no coverage of Scotland. I don't know what we're missing out on, um, but we don't have any of that. Great knowledge of, uh, you know, like, Northern Ireland, Wales, Norway, Brazil, Ecuador. Exceptional knowledge of Ecuador. No knowledge of Scotland. Nobody can be bothered to get in a car.
Ooh, an offer. I wonder if it's just one of those really... Wait a second. Ajax is trying to get somebody that... It... Well, he is a ball winner. He is a ball-winning midfielder, but he's not a good enough athlete that I'm going to drop $54 million on him. Augsburg stall over bids. Uh, they delayed the decision on Everton's bid. Dude, why is everything happening before I get... Oh, they negotiated my the deal for Mark Rodriguez. Yeah, see, I can't do that. So this loan ended, right? So we can um, try and sort out a transfer. See, here's the deal. Uh, we're going to go unavailable for loan. And we are going to offer him out for transfer. He just did a loan, so you know how good Callum Alicesi is. Kieran Tell going to Newcastle sucks. That's another one of those guys we had in our back pocket that we were thinking, hey, maybe. Maybe we make that move, and then all of a sudden we're in a great spot. No, guess not. I just offered out for loan. I did. You're right. That would be because it's my first time playing football manager, you know, and I, uh, I don't really know how. That's a true story. First time playing FM, no idea how to play. Absolutely no clue. Newcastle are hoarding strikers, uh, kind of honestly. All right, I am going to leave this negotiated deal just here and wait until it tells me I have to react to it because that's going to drag this transfer saga out as much as possible. Now that the transfer window is open, is it open for them? No, their transfer window is not open. Well, they have declared interest in Giannis Constantelius. That is a player we are okay moving. That would give us money, and that would give us some freedom to make, uh, to make a transfer, perhaps. There's also the idea that Gonzalo Inacio might be on the transfer block, depending on what happens. Ooh. <clears throat> what asking price do we want to put on Endrick? He'd be happy with a one. Uh, I mean, I know you got money, PSG. I know you've got money. I know you are sitting there flush with cash. I, I don't want to put an asking price because I want to negotiate up from wherever they are. Oh, this is the Yash introduction. I'm pleased. We have the next few years in mind. He's been thoroughly scouted. But we signed him to make a, a, Swiss, a swift improvement to the team. Fresh perspective. Sky's the limit. Everything will work together. Um... He can help take us forward. Uh, yeah, I mean, he is a 19-year-old that was playing with the Newcastle Jets. I'm surprised you guys are so into this. Everybody's got a price. If they want to meet that price, then uh, Indrick can be theirs. Uh, maybe we want to offer him out. I, 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 I don't. I will. I will go on record. I don't want to sell Indrick, but if they give us enough money, anything's possible. All right. He's open to speaking to other clubs. Well, then let's uh, let's see what kind of damage they're willing to do. Let's see what kind of damage they're willing to do. Uh, if they're if they're willing to throw down a ton of cashola, then I'm willing to listen. Who's looking at this? Atalanta and Juventus. Is he okay with this uh, asking price? What's the highest asking price you're okay with? Uh, would be happy with the asking price of 47 million. All right. Let's try a 47 million offer out then. Vuskovic is okay with all of that going down. Googly, Elmo, Vicario. Got a bunch of teams interested in him. End of contract. That makes complete sense. So Giannis. Andes is not ready for the first team. So we're just looking for a loan there. But we don't want to get rid of him. Uh... Yeah, that's what, uh, that's what I'm looking at. Hopefully one of these deals ends up making sense. Noni Metawake, you are solid. Oh, you came to me on the day of my daughter's wedding, and you asked me to pay a release clause I don't want to pay.
Sweet, we sold a U team player for 300K. He was about to leave at an end of contract at the end of the year, so those people just got absolutely worked. <laughs> what? <clears throat> that was a weird noise you guys just made. Hey, would you look at that? Laws have made the offer. Preferred destination would be Al Iyad. Well, he'd still be down to negotiate a deal to potentially move two loans. We signed this kid at uh, 26 years old for 24 million. Definitely <coughs> great and lively player who is a you know an important part of the team this past year. Uh, greed incoming. Uh, yeah, you know, I was feeling the greed starting to well up and like, well, maybe we can get 80 million for Giannis Constantelius, but I am not going to let the greed win. We are going to take the $65 million offer that will give us, you know, like a hundred million, uh, to work with before we even get to Santi Jimenez and Hakan Arner Haraldson's deals, uh, wrapping up at the end of June here. Ola Zessi with a mandatory future fee and installments. Give me a million. Give me a million. Uh, not that interested in a permanent deal. Well, make the permanent deal. That's 1.85 million, Olas Essie, that we can do a deal for in the offseason. Okay. There's Miguel Lages, the uber talented attacking midfielder who just scored his first Argentina goal. He's exempt from league registration. He's an impact sub, so he doesn't have to be Champions League registered. Uh, you know, the wage is a little high compared to what we would want, but we lock him into a five-year deal, and he's definitely somebody that's worth a lot more than what we're paying. It would be $7.5 to complete the deal overall. do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-
Why is it? Oh, come on. We're not sorted by age anymore. What are we doing? Uh, Aqua Viva is Belgium. I did not remember that. All right. Serbia's U21s. We've got a couple of lads hanging out, you know, just 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 the lads. Fur Kadena. I have been offered Fur Kadena so many times. I'm so sick of Fur Kadena. Now, Germany, I'm sure there's some absolutely nasty players on that team. Turkey, weren't you just at the U20 World Cup, or did you just, like, call up a different group of dudes for this? Could have sworn you were hanging out of the U20 World Cup with all the other dudes. Hi, Croatia. Netherlands. Oh, been a while. Feel like we might have missed a few players, you know, Roy Gerritsen. Goodness gracious. He's on Newcastle, of course. Did they sign him? No. Academy product at Newcastle. Oh, kiss my ass. Right? What are you doing? Game, I'm supposed to have one of the best youth academies in the world. I don't see myself getting that guy. Right? Everybody, everybody else... Everybody else here in the friggin' Premier League with their fancy academies, well, they're getting all the fun guys. You know, I'm not. All right. I'm not getting any of the fun guys. My scouts will obliterate this, though. They are so good. They're probably going to be done with this by the end of the transfer window. All of the scouting that we've got going on. Constantelius out for $65 million. That makes me so sad, man. Brian, thank you for the gifted sub. <laughs> Because I love Giannis. I wish it made sense for us to keep Giannis around a little bit more than it than it does. Because it, it it doesn't. That ain't much, but it's honest work. It is. It is much, Brian. It means a lot. Thank you. Premier League stays number one. We are now the eighth biggest club in Europe, according to coefficient, behind Arsenal, Newcastle, City, Barcelona, PSG, Bayern, and Real Madrid. Sick. We did move up eight spots. Uh, Newcastle gets a Champions League spot and Lens gets a Champions League spot based off coefficient. That's crazy. French League is second in coefficient right now. You do not see that often. Yeah, Lens had a uh, sugar daddy takeover. It's because the job I did at St. Etienne. You know what it is, isn't it? It is because of that job that I did at St. Etienne. I knew it. All right. Can somebody come in and make an offer for Callum Olesesi so I don't just loan him out again and then end up with nothing good happening? Oh, what's the offer, Vuskovic? $26 million. Yeah, I'm going to need a little more than that. Oh, how's Audrin doing? Oh, yeah, he, like, got hurt. He, like, blew something out, didn't he? Oh, yeah, he tore his thigh muscle. God, Nicholas. Uh, he's still uh, he's still doing the job. He's still playing. Still playing well. Samar Al Shamari. An enthusiastic fullback who is only enthusiastic. But, you know, you appreciate his enthusiasm. Wait, Ancelotti got fired? I thought they won they won the Champions League. Uh yeah, that's not nearly enough money. Andy's not interested in speaking to Lons. So Lons, you are up a creek without a paddle right now, my friend. The intensive language courses are starting to coming uh, come through. Radjevic is speaking English. 
It's over for everybody. Oh, wait a second. Wait a, wait a gosh darn toot and second here. Oh, it's a $53 million release clause, isn't it? This guy's a really, really, really good striker to be playing on mid. I mean, this guy's playing in the championship. That's crazy. By uh, uh, why am I about am I about to drop half a hundred mil to get him? No, no I'm not. Wait, 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 wait. I do need to do one thing. Mark Rodriguez, the offers were rejected. They want the 85 million in his release clause, or else they're not gonna move him. Karen Tell's release clause is 74 million. Now, with the sale of Giannis Constantelius, we could make that happen. He is a striker's striker. We have so many good facilitating players. I think maybe that's what we need, is a striker's striker. And off the ball, first touch, first time shot, all Erling Holland knockoff. So there's no need for Kaya. No, Mujahid Kaya is a tremendously talented player, but he can play across the entire front four. Signing Kieran Tell helps us replace Giannis Constantelius in that we can drop Kaya into that role where he can play any of those wing spots and he can play them well. Yeah, Williams is 6'5", but the jumping reach on Tell is only one lower. So Williams' size actually doesn't help him that much uh, because he does not elevate well. So the offer's what, from Newcastle? I mean, and Bayer Leverkusen, but he won't take that one. Uh, let's just see. Let's let, let's see. We'll have the money coming in from the Constantelius deal. Let's take a look. So his wage demand isn't crazy. He has the same interest in joining Newcastle, less interested in PSG, so he really wants to stay in England. Um, okay. Let's read this. Tal expects to be promised to be initially considered a regular starter but he wants a clear pathway for that to improve and he wants to be rewarded if he performs well. I can do that easy, dude. I can do that easy. Yeah, I think it's a face in the game uh, or a name in the game or whatever it's freaking called, face in the game player, Kieran Tell. Yeah, the orange consistency uh, it, like I I already noticed that. That's just I can that is not as bad as not liking big matches to me. I've had players that have been really 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 good with orange consistency. Why not give him more playing time to make sure you get him over Newcastle? Yeah, that I I mean that's why I was looking at the screen. That's what I was thinking about. We'll come in and say, hey, dude, uh, he won season landmark goal, uh, goal bonuses, obviously. Sell on fee percentage at 10%. Removing that is scary because this Jack Armstrong guy does not like me. Uh, he does not. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove but not remove and exclude. Remove and not remove and exclude because we do not want him to immediately we're gonna have we got, we got one shot at this it's a release clause if we don't hit this negotiation he's gone he's gonna go to newcastle um top goal scorer bonus in the division how about i will give you a million clean if you get team of the year and top goal scorer i'll give you a million clean 15 goals i'll give you a million and i'll give you 350 if you get to 20 and 350 if you get to 25 I'll also increase your wage to 10.66. Total wage impact of 12.53 million per year. 
which is still way less than Santiago Jimenez was getting paid, which uh, makes me very happy. Five-year contract, so we have a ton of control over Kieran Tall going right into the prime of his career. Probably extend another four-year deal out to 31 or 32, maybe. And then that would be like his career, and then maybe you sell him at 30, 31 years old. That is like half of what Basuma was on when we joined. Yes, exactly. We are, even though it's a lot of money, we are still making deals that look and feel better. So hopefully Jack is okay with that. He is. Beautiful. We just wanted to get the uh, yearly salary increase because that really hurts on a big contract over five years. And we wanted to get the sell-on fee percentage off for obvious reasons because he's the type of guy that could go for $150 million in the future. You never know. So the offer's in. We'll see if we can get him. Um... But Tottenham is in for Kieran Tall, who's... I'm impressed by his attribute improvement recently. And Belchior Canelio, was that a hat trick? Oh, right when I choose this guy over Giannis Constantelius, he shows me I'm right. A hat trick at the U21 Championships for Belchior Canelio. Oh, what a player! I would consider selling Indrik, but look, it's only for the right price here. We're only really in this for the right price, okay? That's uh, that's the that's the long and the short of it, okay? That's the long and the short of it. It's really like Bel Belchior. I think it's Belchior, right? That's uh, that's it. Z, your camera's frozen. Hold on, let me look. Hard to tell. A lot of inertia with this forehead, but I think I think we're doing all right. I think we're vi I think we're vibing, you know, I think we're hanging out. Z, who's that handsome man on your camera? Oh, stop it. Player called up for the gold cup. Oh, there's a gold cup this summer for Rosales. Yay! New Premier League season draws near, and the suspicion is killing me. Mom, I'm scared. Hey, Olisessi, can you leave? You're okay with that? All right. I didn't know we hadn't uh, we hadn't discussed the fact that I want you to be leaving. Two point five million, please. What a player. What a great player. Uh, you know, what a player that we we absolutely adore. Uh, a player that, you know, we... we uh, A miraculous story of we were unable to sign him at St. at the end, but then we got a new job just in time to steal him from another transfer, and he lit up the Premier League for a year and a half. He was huge in our Europa League title run. He is a trophy winner at Tottenham Hotspur. Giannis Constantelius then leaves for $65 million to Lulz. The Greek god. And then he made us a lot of money on the way out the door. I wish him the best in the next step of his career. I think we're building a, a super fantastic team here. Unfortunately, he's not going to be able to be a part of that, but... We just cashed out a really good amount of money for a guy that I feel like was going to start to fall out of the rotation this year based off the other players that we had around the team. I'm going to miss him, though. There was something fun. There was something, you know, special about the way he played the game. He had such good ball control, such clean technique with that 18 technical rating. Uh, there was something fun about watching Giannis go to work, and we will miss that. We will miss that, but we have the money for the Carantal transfer now, but without having to wait for Hawk and Arner Hildson and Santiago Jimenez's money uh, to come in. <coughs> Somebody's trying to steal one of my scouts. Is that what I just saw? 
Nice try. All right. Newcastle's trying to give Joao Ferreira a new job. And Daniel Levy continues to rubbish rumors of takeover talks. Sick. There's our 30th scout, Jose Mayorga. We got him. Our pulling power, absolutely unmatched, chat. Absolutely unmatched pulling power from your boy. Kieran Tall, a release clause of 74 million to get him from Bournemouth. A striker's striker with the off the ball, the well-rounded athleticism, the places shots, the beating the offside trap, appearing in the other team's goal. I think he's going to have an absolutely outstanding season. Not to mention he is nation grown, obviously, which is a huge help to us. Thomas, thank you so much for the two months. Thank you for supporting the stream, Thomas. And thank you for doing it with $5 of Jeff Bezos money. This is a reminder to everybody that if you have an Amazon Prime, you get a free $5 to spend on Twitch to get no ads on one stream. I'm not asking you to spend it here. I'm just saying you should spend it literally anywhere so that Jeff Bezos doesn't get to keep those $5. Steiner, thank you for the gifted sub. Thank you for gifted swoosh to sub, dude. Brazilian Fury, thank you for the gifted sub. The big steeds, Gary's going crazy. We've got gifted subs. <laughs> and they're to celebrate Karen Tall. Voodoo Man, thank you for dropping the prime. I appreciate it, dude. Thanks for spending $5 of Jeff Bezos' money. Steiner, thank you for gifting us subs. Like, ah. Wow. I got it. We're throwing out a gifted sub. I can do that. I appreciate I appreciate you guys supporting the channel with kindness and giving random people uh ad-free experience and the bacon and the emotes. Have I seen Liechtenstein's goal against Latvia? No, I have not. Is there Nations League going on today? Why are Liechtenstein and Latvia playing? Oh, Georgia and Greece. I didn't know the Euro qualification uh, playoff is already happening. Uh, oh, yeah, the Virgins played today, too. Yo, Kevin, thank you for the gifted sub. Westbrook with the five gifted subs. Grace, thank you so much for the gifted sub. Chat, what's going on here? Kevin, thank you so much. Grace, thank you so much. Race, I appreciate it. Westbrook with a career 65 gifted subs. Thank you for making five people's days, giving them the ad-free experience, the bacon, the emotes. Steiner, thank you for another gifted sub, dude. Holy smokes. But yes, there is a World Cup qualifying in CONCACAF. Turks and Caicos versus Anguilla. British Virgin Islands against the U.S. Virgin Islands. Dude, I'm dialed in, locked into that. Nations League playout, Lithuania and Gibraltar. I think Lithuania is up a goal, right? Yeah, they won the first leg, won nothing. I really need to go outside. Oh, they canceled the Japan-North uh, Korea match? North Korea was actually playing this time. What happened? Oh, Octi, thank you so much, dude. With the all oh, Westbrook with five more. Octi, thank you for the five gifted subs. Thank you for making five people's days. Westbrook, thank you for supporting the stream with tons of kindness. That's 10 gifted subs for Westbrook. Cam, thank you so much for the prime. Uh, Zephyr, thank you for the three months. Wouldn't sub to anyone else. Your content's played a big part in saving my life. You help me more than you know. Dude, that is so kind uh, to me. I'm, I'm glad I can help, dude. I'm glad you enjoy hanging out. I'm glad that the vi the the I'm glad that the good vibes are are helpful. And I I appreciate that, Zephyr. Life's always worth living, my dude. It is. Think of it like a video game. You know? It's like football manager. You don't want the save to end, dude. You gotta keep going. But thank you, they Westbrook, Octi, Steiner, Race, Kevez. Brazilian Fury, thank you guys for all the gifted subs. It it really does mean the world. Uh, to have a, you know, I I know I didn't stream for like five straight days, but to, to still have twenty four hundred or like almost twenty four hundred subs is is amazing. It's what allows us to do what we do and make all the different stuff on all the different channels that uh, hopefully you guys enjoy. Um, 
You know, we're always going to keep trying to make better stuff. Alpha Barracuda, thank you for the gifted sub to Wizard. <laughs> I always loved the name Alpha Barracuda. I really, I really appreciate it. Oh, we've got qualif- Dude, Chad made it. Chad made it. 3-1 on aggregate over Mauritius for Chad. They are going to the next round of World Cup qualifying. Eswatini knocks out Somalia. 5-2 on aggregate. Eswatini to the next round of World Cup qualifying. Liberia and Djibouti. It looks like Liberia is going to go through 2-0 over Djibouti on aggregate. South Sudan and Sao Tome e Principe are tied at 1. That's African World Cup qualifying. We had some Asian World Cup qualifying. Japan and North Korea got canceled, but Australia blew out Lebanon. Palestine managed to win against Bangladesh. That's a necessary three points if they're getting out of the round. Massive blowout for Iraq over the Philippines, which is terrible for the Philippines. Um, that means Iraq is top of the group easy. Indonesia is in second. Philippines has really fallen off. Uh, China with a 4-1 over Singapore. Indonesia beat Vietnam 3-0. That's why they're looking so good. South Korea drew Thailand in their last match, but they have beaten Thailand to continue to top the group after drawing Thailand. China's in second right now because of their win over Singapore, who I think they drew in the first leg. Afghanistan just beat India. India, come on, man. India was doing okay, too. I mean, what a bottle. India beat Kuwait, lost to Qatar, which is fine. Qatar is way better than them. Drew Afghanistan and lost to Afghanistan. Are you kidding me? All they had to do was win one of those matches and they were probably good. But now it's going to be really dicey for India to get to the next round of qualifying. Kyrgyzstan beat Taiwan. Oman beat Malaysia. This group's really interesting. I think uh, Kyrgyzstan and Oman are top of it right now. Malaysia's hanging on in third, but you have to get top two to get to the next round of World Cup qualifying. Uzbekistan with the win over Hong Kong. Tajikistan just drew Saudi Arabia. Hell yes. Big point for Tajikistan. Because they have a win over Pakistan, a draw with Jordan. That means Jordan's going to have to get a point off Saudi Arabia. <whistles> and Iran beat uh, Turkmenistan. There's some more matches apparently kicking off at three. I don't even know what time that is. <laughs> Wherever those matches are being played. But Iran and Uzbekistan are basically already through based off the results that have happened. So Hong Kong made it to the Euros, but they are out. And then, of course, Euros qualification. Georgia and Greece, nil-nil at halftime. Chippy game, apparently. Apparently. Hey, Boxing Bat, thank you for the 27 months. Thank you for spending $5 of Jeff Bezos' money. Three total Twitch babies. I'm glad you're keeping track of the child support there. Uh, Barso, thank you for the prime. Thank you for the 14 months. Much love back to you, dude. Thank you for supporting the stream. And uh, Marco, thank you for the prime. And greatest of all time, missed my cooked bacon in January. Oh, dude. Yeah, you're, you're still too... You, I mean, you, 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 your bacon's cooked. It's two months away from silver, but welcome back, greatest of all time. It's good to have you. Is Constantelli is playing? Apparently, he's on the bench for Greece today, which, totally fair. Is there something we want to work on with Tel? Uh, I'm going to work on his work, um, his work right. We're just going to work that straight endurance for Karen Tell. Karen Tall. All right, so we just got a striker. We just signed a guy for a ton of money, guys. That was a big old transfer. LS Verona have offered $13 million for Ismail Detri. All right. They exercised the optional signing of Ismail Detri at the end of his loan, so that means we're going to get $13 more million when we hit the turnover to July 1st. We're unveiling... I, I don't want to alarm anybody, chat. The leaked, oh, right. I literally went over here to find the Liechtenstein goal. And I was trying to find something to talk about. Somebody told me there was something going on, but there wasn't. It was lies. I forgot I was doing that. Um, how confident am I that that's the way to spell Liechtenstein? Oh, uh, their goal against Latvia? Is that where that the own goal? Okay. So this is Liechtenstein's goal against Latvia. Here we go. Um, this is a replay here. We've got uh, Latvia's in the white. Liechtenstein is in the um, 
Liechtenstein is in the uh, the blue. All right. Saints, thank you for the tier one, dude. Thank you for supporting the stream. Enjoy your lack of ads now. No, I can't full. So if you ever wondered why I don't full screen this stuff, it's because I have been banned on Twitch once before, and it was for watching a highlight of a match that was still going on, and it was because Twitch has crawlers that go around the website to make sure people aren't just, like, live streaming games. You know what I mean? So that's why we keep it. We, we just don't want... Oh my goodness. Uh, that this is what Pep Guardiola's done to the game right here. This is what Pep Guardiola has done to the game. Now you've got center backs for Latvia trying to play a tiki taka with the goalkeeper when they can't do it. And it's more of a liability than it is like a proper bit of build up play. This is what Pep Guardiola's done to the game right here. All you gotta do is hoof that up the field. You're Latvia. Up the field. All right? You know that? But, like, come on, man. 13 seconds into the game. Yeah, like, this, this is what the whole total football thing has done. Is like, yes, people at the very top level of the game can make that pass and play out of the back because it's John Stones passing to, you know, Ederson. <laughs> if you're Latvia, you got a better chance of winning if you just get that ball away from your goal. You're playing Liechtenstein. It's not like they're going to go flying past you the other way. Come on. Dude's trying to play like, what is that? A no look? Does he even look here? He's trying to be like, he doesn't look, he doesn't look. And then he turns his head right as he's making the pass. As he's trying to deliver a no look ball to the goalkeeper. There are questions to be asked to the goalkeeper here. Where the hell is he going? I mean, I realize this is on the defender, but what, like the goalkeeper is here. Like when he, so if you, if you're this center back, actually, he never looks, he never looks at the goalkeeper. He just checked in the, actually, he just checks. He checks right here. He does a little peek and the goalkeeper is where that, like this pass wouldn't have been that bad, but the goalkeeper is like, where, how does fading that way make it easier for you to play out of the back in that case? Like he really shouldn't have moved. Yeah, I mean, they're, like, trying to open it up for the pass, but I think he's just moving for the sake of moving here. I mean, he can receive, like, he's just backpedaling away for the ball. I mean, he's making the pass for the other guy harder. I mean, it's not an easy pass they're asking him to make there. I mean, that's not a situation where you want to sub off anybody immediately, but it's, like, it is one of those situations where I think you probably need to look at your strategy of playing out from the back. If Liechtenstein's press is going to force you into accidentally passing the ball into the back of the net, then let's not. You don't want to gift a team like Liechtenstein a goal because that's the hardest thing for Liechtenstein is scoring. Now they're going to be, their ears are going to be up. They're going to be playing as hard as they possibly can because it smells like they're going to be able to get a result. Do, 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 do. Uh, what are the thoughts around having Karen Tall and Mushahid Kaya in the same team? I want them to both bring the best out of each other. I think they will be able to do that. Yeah, I mean, we have had a busy transfer window signing talented young players, but no barrier if they're a fantastic player. You know what I'm saying? No barrier. Georgia got a red card. Oh my goodness. Are you serious? I mean, it's still halftime, so I, I don't know, but what are, is it just a friendly between Latvia and Liechtenstein? Who is the worst team with an L in their name? Like, is that the question? I do need uh, another recruitment focus. All right, I'm going to create a few, actually. Six. 
center backs. Yay. And defensive midfielders. I already have a give me a ball winner, and now we're going after defensive midfielders. Oh, wait, I need to um, remove people we already know about, please. I Yeah, actually include people I already know about in the center back thing. I, or that have not, or that have already appeared in a report. Okay, I think I can create one more. Okay, I'm going to create another focus, and we're looking for quality uh, fullbacks. Do -do 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 -do. Okay, and I think I can create one more focus because I have so many scouts, so let's just go with wingers. Trying a new philosophy with this. The reason I'm doing it this way is because uh, I want players that are at least decent, and I want, um, if they're older, I want them to be a little bit better. I don't really care about potential ability quite as much after the star rating stuff, the like, studies that I did. So we're going to throw all those out there. Anybody not assigned? Yeah, apparently I can create one more, so... Let's do that. Let's go with, uh, we've got fullbacks. We've got wings. We've got, let's just, uh, let's up our striker one. Uh, let's just up, upgrade our striker scouting. I really do have room for one more recruitment focus. I guess there's no reason not to, um, go for a center mid. Is the season over? Uh, yes. Yes, it is. Um, correct, Mundo. Right, apparently, I still have four scouts that aren't doing anything. I find that hard to believe because I'm looking for decent players at, like, literally every position all over the world. What's this offer for? Olazesi? Oh, yes. That's so nice. And he wants to talk to them. 2.5 million. See you later. Oh, it's the small victories. It really is. It's the small victories. This dude. Am I being an idiot or is he a pretty good fullback? Because he's an amazing athlete. I say, you know, pretty good. Yo, 16 Saints, so thank you so much for the tier one. Hi. <laughs> Boxing Man, thank you for the 27 months. He's eighth in the prem in clearances per 90 minutes. His tackling is better than his attributes indicate. He's won possession 436 times, and he's 10th in the prem in possession one per 90 minutes played. Good high-intensity sprint guy. Very good overall clearances, obviously. He's top 10 in clearances and clearances per 90. What are my thoughts on the new NFL kickoff? Uh, I like it. If you guys understand American football, they just made a huge change to the kickoff for the players that are like actually doing the the tackling start like 
way up the field, but the kicker starts way back. Yeah, yeah so let me let me see if I can show you what it looks like. Like, if you understand NFL, if you don't, I promise this will be super quick. But let's, uh, I think Adam Schefter tweeted something out with like a video of it. So like, this is what it looks like basically. So the kicker's back here, like all the way over here, and then all of the players are over here. Because what they're trying to do is cut down on the number of injuries, and the injuries were normally caused by, like, the full speed that players can get up by running from here to here. Uh, so what they're doing is just starting all of the tackling over here. So what you end up with, I'm going to go out of full screen as it plays to avoid any DMCA weirdness, but it's just kind of more of a scrum in, in, in less full speed collisions. It's, like, much safer. So I totally get why they're doing it. I like it. I think it allows kickoffs to be a thing again. Yeah, you know, it works for me. I mean, it was already very hard to return because they moved the kickers up so that they could just bomb it out of the back of the end zone, you know? And so it was already difficult to return stuff. How does an onside kick work? I mean, I'd imagine the same as, uh, I would imagine an onside kick is the same, like you just kind of have to announce that you're doing an onside kick. I realize what you're saying is that surprise onside kicks are now not possible, which does suck. Those are fun plays, but they have now been removed from the game for safety reasons, and it's hard to argue with that, obviously. All right. We're pretty clear that this is a guy that we... Um, one alone out. Now, his personality is an issue, obviously. Um, it's a lack of ambition, which by itself isn't bad. Especially considering he's level-headed, so his professionalism is, at least isn't terrible. Being unambitious is like being loyal. That's fine. Here's Kieran Tall, a uh, new striker. New shiny toy we just signed. $74 million release clause. We just swan-dived right in there, dude. Let me tell you. All right, let me set uh, Googly Elmo for release here. That will give us a little more financial fluidity. I'm going to set him and Kelleher for release. So that will uh, that will show that our projected budget, we are still well under our payroll that we're, that we're chilling at right now. Even though we're currently spending over, it's not really that big of a deal, you understand. You understand. All right, so transfers in the air right now. We have Olus Essi out. Hawker and Harrelson's leaving. Ismail Detri's got his deal done. Hellas Verona decided to extend him. Yeah, Olus Essi for two and a half million. Nothing else. Nothing else has come through right now. I don't know if there's anything else we would want. I am going to take Belchior Canilio off the loan list because he is... Stop getting worse, dude. I just decided you were going to be a part of the team this year, man. <laughs> Stop getting worse, brother. Okay, because we signed Kieran Tell, we actually don't need that guy, so we'll look to loan him out, or he'll just be really deep cover over the course of the season. I'm okay with either one. He's not getting a huge wage. I'm still about to lose the scout. We don't know if I am going to lose that scout. We just know that he's been offered a contract by Newcastle. He could he could totally turn that contract down. And that would be not surprising. Uh okay, maybe not. We are I am gonna lose the scout. I guess that's just something we're gonna have to live with, man. I don't know. We're gonna lose one of our scouts. How will we ever survive? I hate that you knew that stoppage time. I didn't even know that. Attracting interest amid takeover rumors. Yeah, I heard a lot of that. And then he always he always scuttles it. So these are contracts expiring at the end of next year. Gamera, Doig, and Kaode. I'm going to sell Gamera this summer for whatever money we can get. Final decision, even though he's club grown, I, I just can't find a way to... He just doesn't get into the team, and he doesn't like big matches, and it's just, it's all there. We'll see if we can get over $40 million for Gamera. That would be nice. Um, we're just going to have to live without a club-grown player outside of Ingley and McAvoy, who is club-grown and has seven England caps somehow, even though I don't think he's very good. 
Hey, dude, you really got to focus anything you got left on not sucking at defense because you're quite bad at it right now. Coyote, I want to extend his contract. I like him. Uh, he's getting paid so much ever-loving money, though. That is crazy. I forgot how much money Coyote was getting paid. Oh, that is offensive. Oh, dear Lord. He's one of these holdovers from when we were handing out paychecks that were, I mean, positively ridiculous. He wants 21 million base salary. That is so high. Uh, look, you want a five-year deal, Coyote? That is long. I I don't think he would say yes to this. This would reduce the amount of money he's making, but obviously guarantee him a giant contract over the next five years. Yeah, okay. Uh, Gamera's gone. Doig is not getting paid crazy money, uh, which is nice. That's always a good thing when that is happening. Um, they want us to strengthen center back. I We have good center backs. You guys are all wild for that. Uh, remove. Okay, good. Now we're at least talking reasonably here. Scott Wilson has a great respect for me. All right, speak to me like a man here. I'll give you $10 million. It's a three-year deal till you're 32. It makes complete sense. Are you kidding me, man? Doig, that, I mean, do, sorry, Doig's agent, that was a very reasonable deal. Ingley and McAvoy, he wants that pathway to being a regular starter. I don't want to let him get to squad player. I do, however, not want to let him leave for free because there's always people interested in McAvoy, particularly because England seems to be without left backs at the moment, and he's a guy that gets England time, and so people are really into that. Olazesi's being sold. Coyote and Doeg, we want to find a way to renegotiate a new deal, but it's kind of insane how much uh, Coyote is asking for. So I'm going to reduce his asking price. Uh, to 110, and then he'd be very interested in speaking to other clubs. Let's see. I mean, 110 million for a fullback would be crazy. He's really good, though. I, I like him a lot, and I, I really don't want to lose him, but if we can get really good money, he the amount of money that he wants to be paid is crazy, so... Maybe else attracting interest that maybe we'd want to move. I know we're going to lose an Echo Romo, and that was a very important part of the team last year. Regovic is crazy. Yes, Regovic is crazy good. That is correct. Oof. Yeah, we are, uh, we're open to exploring that. What? He rejected the deal? Oh, you madman. That might have actually made us money. Hell is Verona couldn't hammer out a contract after agreeing to trigger the clause, and now he's not moving. Oh, my God. Oh, that's, that's kind of wild, actually, that that, uh, that that happened. Yero Konate. I'm not going to say not to go for it. I won't say don't go for it. Hey, Gold Cup. Who qual what random team qualified this time? Barbados, Antigua, and Barbuda. Martinique is vibing. Uh once again, Jamaica. I think it's a glitch. Jamaica's just not in the Gold Cup. <laughs> I couldn't tell you. It's the second time in a row. Oh, he actually went down in reputation. That's annoying. He went up, Barcelona. We're wedged firmly in the four and a half star reputation teams. I, however, I am now a five star manager, which is kind of crazy. Oh, these are loan offers for Andas. Ah, uh, championship. But then we could go league. Oh. 
What was his adaptability? I, I don't I don't remember. But he could go to Montpellier and he'd pick up a loan fee of one point two million. Uh Fabian Palmstrom Andas. With the lack of uh quality we have at center back, I'm actually thinking that maybe we want to send you to the championship for a year. Because then you don't have to worry about recalibrating. Uh, you know, re readjusting to a new environment to play in. So we'll take the championship deals. So is Ellis somebody that could draw interest? Oh, well, his value is a little lower than I would have hoped. I mean, if you're getting like 70 million all of a sudden for that guy, you're like, okay. I am ready to have a conversation. How much would I sell Vizkovic for? 47 million. That's the asking price, dudes. Hobo John, thank you for gifting us up. Let's go. Somewhere where he's an important player. He will be very important to championship teams. He's a very good center back at a championship level. So ain't no issue there. Oh, Dortmund. Hello. Dortmund's interested in Gamara. That's a team with money. Oh, Saints, thank you for gist gifting Riv a sub. Thanks for supporting the stream with kindness and giving somebody no ads for a whole month and all the emotes and everything. Why does not... Uh, why does the German national team not exist? So the German national team has rights. Uh, I know, shocking. Uh, but they... <laughs> I, mean, I mean, like, they have name, image, and likeness rights, basically. And so what happens is the German national team and... Uh, SI, who makes Football Manager, have not done a deal where SI has the right to use uh, the German national team. Now, you can still get the German national team in the game. I have the German national team in this game right now. You just have to install something called the Real Name Fix. If you Google Football Manager Real Name Fix, go to a website called FM Scout, a uh, very, very reliable website. You're going to be going into like your folders on Football Manager and deleting a few things, but then life will be good. Then all of a sudden you'll have, uh, you know, I think it's the Jap it was the Japanese national team, the Dutch national team, the German national team that wouldn't exist. Those teams would exist. Uh, and they would be able to call up your players and any other players and have like an actual full functioning national team. But you have to install something called the real name fix, Steiner. And that'll get you set up. Kolchov, thank you for the year. Congrats on your golden bacon. A whole gosh darn tootin' year. Constantelius is subbing in. Let's go, dude. He's going to make the difference. He's going to send Greece to the Euros, I'm telling you. Giannis Constantelius in for Pelkash. Watch him score the goal. Oh, guys, Lithuania is staying in Nations League C. Gibraltar has been eliminated, it would seem. Down 2-0 on aggregate with 30 minutes to go. Liberia is to the, you know, Mauritius, Djibouti, and Somalia knocked out of the World Cup today. So is uh, Hong Kong, basically, with their 3-0 loss. You know, no, no Djibouti, no Somalia. We're going to be worse off at the World Cup without those teams around. You know, that's what I was thinking. We're just going to be worse off. The world would have been better off. We got, you know, at least Djibouti in. Saints, thank you for gifting Mars a sub. If you get a gifted sub, be sure to say thank you. Wickle, thank you for the 15 months. I appreciate it. Well, then, Steiner, I'm glad I was able to help, dude. That's a tough question, right? I, you know, there's a lot of different potential answers to that question. Um, each more interesting than the last. A lot of philosophers have a lot of different theories on uh, on how that question could and should be answered, you know? Um Definitely a really intriguing question that you just asked there. Uh, while I, you know, just glance through the Vanuatu youth national team here. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, you know, there's just so many different things that could have happened. Who's to say? Like, maybe yesterday was a simulation, as I understand it, and something else real happened. You know, sometimes you don't know. Well, you know, the world around us is just how we perceive it. So what did I perceive happened yesterday? I don't know. You know, it's crazy. I, uh, 
I feel like I didn't really perceive anything. I feel like I was just floating in the ether yesterday, uh, really. And that's um, isn't that what we're all pursuing at the end of the day? So I'm just really proud of all of us. Great work, guys. Yes. That was deep. Thank you. That's what we were going for. A nice deep understanding of what happened and why. Okay, that dude's not um not the worst player I've ever seen. Cristiano Sawaya. I love the name. I think it's time to redo the new gen as well. We're starting to get a lot of players that don't have faces again. I think anybody that's like 18 or under does not have a face. Zealand talks about himself being a suspicious, being suspicious or being AI a lot, starting to get suspicious. Hey, I mean, you've never, have you ever met me in real life? How do you know I exist anywhere but on this computer screen? Oh. I will be at TwitchCon in Rotterdam, the EU TwitchCon. So if you want to prove I'm not an AI, that's where you can do it. Shella, thank you for the 13 months. I will be at TwitchCon in Rotterdam. If, if you ever wanted to prove yeah, if you ever if you ever wanted to prove I was real and not a bot until I suspiciously get sick right before and I'm unable to go, you know I'll be on screen at TwitchCon exactly. You'll be able to watch me on screen at TwitchCon. It'll be awesome. Rotterdam doesn't even exist. Dang it, you caught me. How did you know? <laughs> Aldo Rodriguez. Uh, he's 18 years old. Maybe you need to develop like an absolute madman. Urbaniak. Oh, yay, we're into Mexico. They're in the middle of like a golden generation right now. A lot of the players that have been flying out of Mexico have looked really, really good in this save. But we scouted the entire U20 World Cup, and I am expecting to find somebody that I like. Gamal Allah. Oh, come on. There's got to be. Egypt's youth rating is too high for there not to be somebody. Egypt's youth rating is way, 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 way too high for there not to be somebody that they're putting out here. Oh, now we're, okay. I don't think we got all of the Egyptian players. We got enough of them. Now we're looking at a few of the English players, which is where my interest is really peaked here. Tarek Ali, Steve King. Any hidden gems down here? Andrew Sinclair at Celtic. Actually pretty good. He's not like great, but he's definitely pretty good. Oh, sweet. Now we've got a bunch of previously scouted dudes that are hitting the transfer list. I mean, this guy, uh, there's a reason he's drawing interest from all over the world because he's listed for $7 million and he's an incredible athlete. Uh, I will put him on target acquired. We will keep an eye on him. I'm not going to go for him right now because he's 16s and 17s, not 18s and 19s. If he was 18s and 19s, he'd be worth it. He'd be unstoppable. No matter what happens. Charlie Ward, I know that you are under a bid from Everton at the moment, Charlie, but if we sold Coyote for $110 million, I would then scoop you up for 40 and slot you into that right-back rotation. I want you to know that, Charlie. There is a world where you become potentially on my a, a player on my team. Uh, do, 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 do. How much is this guy getting paid? Not a lot? Why does PSG want to not have him? I guess because he's not actually that good at anything and he's got 12 first touch, but he is also perfectionist. 
I don't know. It's a weird player. I feel like he's the type of guy you can put on the field and he won't make a difference for you in a positive way, but he's also not bad. 20 determination, 10 jumping reach. Nice. I guess he can play defensive midfield, so. Well, that's not even the guy I was looking for. Come on. What was that guy's name? It was something Flores. What was his freaking name? Oh, I fuck good. Reese Hein Flores. Oh, dude, yes, totally. You're right. I like. I I I wanted to make sure that dude was on my um. I don't think he is. I want to make sure he was in the right collection, the right space. I know he's on a short list that I have. I just don't know which one. Uh, Mexican Juan Manuel. It wasn't Flores at all. It was Juan Manuel Velasco. I want to put him on a different short list. Okay. Don't want to let those guys fall through the cracks. He, I think he's a real good player. Bittencourt, man, we sold him a while ago. He's still going. He is still a decent player. Albert Sambi Laconga, 31-year-old defensive midfielder. God, he's good at everything, too. They'd still be charging thirty to forty. If it was if it was down to like, oh, just pay ten million and this guy's on your team, I'd probably do it. Oh, you know who else we have to set for release? It's gonna make me really sad. Where is he? He oh, we don't have to set him for release. He's already struck a deal with Alfate for the end of the season. But Eves Basuma, who's been with the team since twenty twenty three. When he was signed from Brighton for $38.5 million. What a deal that was. And he helped lead us to a Europa League title. We could get Toon Cup Miners. And put him on the target acquired list just so we, we keep a real... Keep a sharp eye on him. We'll keep a sharp eye. Yeah, and Echo Romo is uh, 163 million because that was a potential future transfer we negotiated as part of his loan. Believe it or not, I'm thinking we aren't going to do that. I think upon further consideration, we are not going to buy an Echo Romo for 163 million. Interesting thing about his uh, loan to us, though, is that he, because he got at least six assists, is upgraded to a regular starter back at uh, Newcastle when he returns home after his loan out but we have managed to loan in a world-class winger in consecutive seasons which is hilarious and has been a lot of fun can we loan him again based off the fact that they had a target for him to get six assists and then he would be promoted to a regular starter i don't think so because he did get those assists which means he is about to slot in as a regular starter playing time-wise. Whether they meet that or not is up to them. Gabriel Misui. Uh, you know... There we go, Noah Darvich. That's what I'm talking about. That dude has some game. Why is City is not charging crazy money for a lot of their guys? 76 to 92 is super fair for this guy. He is very good. That actually might be a that might be a deal. Especially if we get like a huge move for Endrick. All of a sudden that guy becomes an incredibly likely signing. How many Enriques are there, really? Like, if we're being honest with ourselves, how many Enriques exist in the world? And why are all of them on my short list? There can't possibly be 
this many Enriquez. I don't believe it. Five? Okay, then I definitely have all of them on my short list, at least. Wow, this dude's not offensively priced, considering he's a pretty quality uh, uh, ball-playing defender here. Not offensively priced at all. Does have a competitive streak, though, that they're trying to warn me about, but I'm just going to ignore that. Alfie Dorrington. I'm pretty sure that dude's, like, on top at the start. Majid Leonardson. He's getting better. Still physically terrible, though. And then good old Sven Berlin. Old Svenny. Darvich, the best player in the world in my save. Dude's a monster. Yeah, I could see that. I could definitely see that. Dusan Yeftich, his contract's already out, let's be honest. Quarterfinal of the Champions League. Yeah, all right. Qualify for the Champions League in the league. Quarterfinal of the FA Cup. Third round of the... Really? You want to be that ambitious? Okay. Um, You know, not really adding a lot of money no matter what I do here, so. Got it. Board wants to discuss improving the training facilities. Thank you. I tried to do that earlier, but you said no. But the training facilities, you know, they got worse. They erode over time. And now we, uh, we're turning over seasons. Let's go. New season, and we just got $100 million. So $100 million for the TV rights. Love that. Rosales plays a more simple passing game. That's awesome. All right, let me go to work here. <clears throat> 50 million. No, I'm just kidding. 46. 43. 40. <laughs> All right, I right, say so you you Play hard to get. Fine, man. Play hard to get. You know what I'm saying? You you play, play fine. Play your game. I uh, you know, play play your game, all right? Uh, I did not confirm the changes on purpose. Okay. We're going to try a $50 million offer out for that dude. KO Day, we did not get anybody biting. The lowest I would go would be a hundred. The lowest I would go would be a hundred million. I don't know if somebody would be willing to pay that. He is a very good fullback. We would love to keep Coyote around the team this season, but I can do a lot of damage with a hundred million dollars. Well, that's not greed. Okay, that offer was low for a guy that has played for Argentina five times. All right, that offer was low. It was low. All right, Detri, you are returning to me, and we are going to attempt to move you. Rico has a sal- Why does Rico Lewis have a salary raise? God, who is negotiating all these contracts? Zinedine! Any other sneaky hidden things you need to tell me about? Whoa, why does my scout hate this guy? It's a little bit lacking in the athletic department, but he is certainly not a bad player. And that is a goalkeeper with 20 eccentricity. So everybody knows the deal. Fall in love with him immediately. A goalkeeper with 20 eccentricity. Have I died and gone to heaven or have I died and gone to hell? That's the question. <laughs> Depends on the day. Do -do -do -do. Mohammed Nasser. Mohamed Al-Sayed, Hussein Al-Sayed. Nice 17 heading, just randomly. Low self-belief is enough for me to just drop that immediately. I, I do, Eunice, want to at least keep track of you. Abdul Rahman Al-Mutairi. 
I mean, it's pretty sick. Liam Buckmeyer, dude, looks like 47 years old, though. How's there a dude in the Brazilian youth national team that's that bad? That's my question. Because now that we're into the Brazilians, you know, Brazil's youth national teams are serious quality, typically. The most reliably high-quality youth national teams you're going to run into. Same cannot be said for the U.S., Okay, that dude's Aziri. He's got the funny Aziri letters in there. All right, Premier League kicks off in 44 days, brother. We kick it off against the Wolves. Nice. Are you, are you kidding? Nice. I'm sad I didn't think of that joke. Whatever. Georgie Mamardishvili rejects a contract from Laws. I don't know, probably because he's making $44 million a year. Do you ever think that's why he maybe rejected the contract? Is he's making forty-four million a year? Did you ever think? Did you ever think? Long is just offered for KO Day. We'll see. Uh, we will see if we can uh, make that negotiation work. Swansea loan offer for Andas. You have offered to pay exactly none of his wage, which is impressive. Slight interest in speaking to Laws. All right, Laws, I know you have money. They're going to reject this instantly. They didn't, and that's huge. So he is offered $71 million. How about 100 up front? No, that is a 70, $77 million transfer, basically, with 68 up front, because he will play 20 more games for Italy. He's right in the prime of his career. Do, 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 do. All right, what was the information they gave me here? Uh, transfer listing would probably draw more interest, Hector Gamera. That's fair. No, it's just not. It's just not it. You know, it's just not it. I need the hundred million upfront laws. I know you could make the deal happen, laws. You probably don't have the money right now, and if you don't have the money, that's okay. You know, just tell me you're poor. You have no Sigma grind set whatsoever. Just tell me. I'll understand if you just tell me. Do 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 do. The laws has a sugar daddy. Don't sleep on laws in this save. I can see. I can see that you're sleeping on laws in this save. Do not sleep on laws in this save. I'm happy with the way this window's gone so far. We're not going to be able to keep an Echo Romo. Uh, we know that. Oh my god. I mean, look. I'd say they just said El Nasser could be in with a hundred million for Gonzalo Inacio. That is a very highly paid. I mean, he's a good center back. I can find somebody else to fill that spot. He'd be very interested in speaking to other clubs. Hey, dude, throw that offer in there, man. I'd love to see what Al Nasser could do. <laughs> Come on, Al Nasser. I'd never rule anything out. <coughs> then we can move Jarrell Hato to the left and then figure out another center back. But that would also free us of one of those big wages that are a, it's, it's a holdover from Zidane's era where everybody got a huge contract. Reminder to retail the gold. I actually have a reminder on my calendar, but thank you. We're not there yet. It has to be 28 days from the 10th. We've only been 18, but we will get there. Uh, Halberad, thank you for the 34 months, dude. 
Thank you for supporting the stream, dude. You're you're almost at the Z bacon. That is crazy. Way down. Coyote transfer saga is brewing. I doubt it. You're uh, you're probably trying to build that up in your mind a little bit more than it needs to be built up. You know what I'm saying? He's not a very good defender. All right, Callum Olusesi. I uh, am glad we were able to get any money for you at all. You were an overpaid reserve player that wasn't good enough to ever be able to contribute to the first team. So thank you, Rotherham, for two and a half million. Things are about to get tricky. I'm scared. I do not want to lose KO Day. I go, uh, Hector Gamera, I want him to talk to other clubs. Yes, I'm going to talk to KO Day and try to back out of this. I'm not, I'm going to stop trying to offer out KO Day. I would. Oh, we have a contract extension clause? I might take that. But I'm glad to know we have that. So he's happy. We're fine. I'll stop trying to offer him out. Whatever. I'm done. I was just playing around with it to begin with, KO Day. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. I plead the fifth. Ignorance. I do need to schedule my preseason, though. I think we put that off long enough. Okay. Multiple friendly matches. We got our training camp going on here. We're going to get a uh, few matches in that U.S. training camp. Similar reputation teams, foreign. Al Nasser, you're going to pay me some cash, you know? Oh, Athletic Club is going to make us 600000 So I'll play the Charleston Battery. Sounds awesome. Love me some Charleston Battery. I'll play Louisville City. And anybody touring nearby, Feyenoord, will play that match. All right, we'll lock that in, and then we'll arrange some friendlies. We'll do a little multiple friendly all the way down for the rest of it. So we're going to go with foreign teams that are looking for a game, like maybe a, a Club Brugge, perhaps. Atalanta. Oh, AC Milan, yes, that'll pack the stadium. And then, oh, we can play Bayern. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Yeah, no. Didn't want that. Sorry. Um, so we can get a bigger money team here. We can get Napoli to come play us in Milan and Bayern. A little preseason at home vibe there. And that'll help. Bayern have rejected the friendly proposal. They have too busy of a schedule. Well, I'm... I... I am offended... I will take this as a personal insult and play Leverkusen instead in our final friendly. Okay, and then we're going to want to do a preseason training thing, and then we've got that going, and then we'll just stick a recovery and match review here, and then we travel back from the U.S., and then we've got AC Milan down here, and now our preseason training is all set up right before the Leverkusen match. We're also going to want to have our preseason training going, but we kick it off on the 30th of June, right before all the contracts expire, which is nice and awkward. Is it better to pick easier teams to get the morale flowing? Yeah, there's an argument for that. But we also just made like two and a half million or like two, two and a half million from our uh, preseason schedule. And we are a good enough team that we'll win both of the, we'll win most of those matches anyways. So it's not really going to be a huge issue. Uh, so he had a sell-on clause. So Haroldson gets 2.4 million after his move to Atlanta, but... 
That means he's actually going to make $4.6 million from his sale to Atalanta, which is very clever. Um, not sure why a handy squad player was released. I have a few ideas as to why that might have happened. I have a few ideas. Probably because he wasn't actually that good. I uh, the what is this player the oh golden boot oh my goodness Canelia won the golden boot at the U twenty one championships, uh who won Germany beat Belgium in the final, nice, so does that mean the money just came in from the sale I believe it did because that would have just hit me with forty four million right there, so Hakan Arner Haraldson he is gone, oh dude I was like I'm not the U S coach why do I have to do this. That's the preliminary squad. It's not even the actual squad, so I'm not going to even look at it. I'll be able to go in and select the actual squad that's going for the U.S. Uh, to the to the United States for preseason camp later. Highlight my message, Bentley. Um, nice. You did. Uh, you succeeded. Uh, you succeeded. Is there something you wanted to to do? I don't think I have KO Day on the transfer list. Um, I don't think that's happening. What's better, rest or recovery? Rest recovers the condition of your players faster. As far as I understand, recovery maintains your players' momentum faster. Like, it helps reduce fatigue, and it, it doesn't reduce their sharpness as much as rest. No <laughs> highlight mine. I'm also, well, hey, you guys really just piling on here with these messages. I don't even know. Getting a little wild and crazy. Uh, for transfer. Oh, 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 Alali. 40 and then 40 million in installments. I mean, what if, what if we did 80? Or sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. What if we did 80 and 30? I can't believe they walked away from that. Oh, man. We missed out. A U18's coach. Oh, okay. We've got, so we've got some staff to deal with. I'm going to need some water. You guys communicate with each other via highlights. I'll be right back.
Hello, good people of the internet. I don't know, man. Do we have uh, better better scouts than these guys? Uh, uh, probably not. Definitely not than this guy. I am hydrated. I'm ready. I'm I'm ready. Oh, let's go. Please disperse. Nothing to see here. So, hi, guys. How's it going? That was very nice and wholesome. Chris, thank you so much for the prime, by the way. Rua, thank you so much for the two months. Tia Dosi, thank you for the two months. Thank you guys for supporting the stream. Enjoy your lack of ads. An anonymous gifted sub to Lella Bella Bad Boy. Let's... As there should be. If we're being honest with ourselves, as there should be. An anonymous gifted sub to Lella Bella Bad Boy. Adam McGinnis. Yeah, uh, you know, I don't think the issue with our team is a uh, is struggling in the analyst department. So we'll go ahead and give him a raise. Chief Scout Andy Scolding. I actually think we're going to be able to steal the Chief Scout from Byron personally. I'm going to give that a try. We'll see how that goes. He's now out of a contract. Oh, wait, is he leaving? Oh, yeah, he's awaiting the permit to go to Newcastle. Right. Kithson Jacob. That potential is still there, so we're going to give him a contract. Uh, we will probably be seeking a loan for him. Um, but I, I, I am aware of the fact that we like this guy enough. Jordan, you're not. This is not a big deal. Leave me alone. Sam Wright. Uh, Kieran Berry. I don't think any of these guys have uh, have a real ceiling here. Uh, Samuel's just really, really bad. So we're going to get him off the team and set peace coach Sam Harry. You know, we might be able to outdo that. I am going to need a new scout. Marcus Palawa. Can I steal Byron's chief scout? That's my question. Because what a chief scout that is. Can I steal Bayern Munich's chief scout? He's getting paid a lot of money, but I, you know, I have a lot of money. I'm a big time club right here. And if Pilawa wants to get all the money in the world to come be my chief scout. I, you know, I think he might be mine. Okay. I'm just thinking. Uh, Kilman Kelleher and Guglielmo Vicario have left. Vicario's got interested clubs. Arsenal's apparent and United are interested. So right, it's time for us to move on. Kelleher also does. Leicester, Norwich, Cagliari, and Genoa. Oh, uh oh, there's something in the air. Uh... Oh, yeah, I wanted to go. Uh, we, well, one, I need another scout. Second of all, I need another scout. I need Mario Vassen. I need one guy that's not a chief scout where he is right now. Gerardo Guzman. All I needed, just one guy that's not a chief scout where he is right now. I'm just going to steal another scout from Manchester United. Coaching team, set piece coach, set pieces, 19 would be enough. <laughs> that was good. Well done. <coughs> Philippe. Thank you for the 15 months. You don't get a lot of great Chuck Norris jokes anymore. It's a bygone era, but I, for one, am glad that we have found one here today. Where the hell is set pieces on this thing? Um, do I have to add it?
Oh, they all have 20, uh, which I guess I'd already established. So we're really just looking at mental attributes, um, determination, discipline at freaking 20. All right, St. Etienne's Nicholas Pereira. Am I stealing from my old club? Yes, I am. Oh, love that. I love that so much for me. Oh, tactical knowledge? You need tactical knowledge? Well, that actually changes uh, things then. Uh, set piece coaches needing tactical knowledge is very new to me. I'm just going to go ahead and get Nicholas Pereira. He's, he's going to be fine. You're going to be great, sweetie. Hamlet. Yeah. Okay, dude, you're, you're at Juventus and you're still not good and you're still not doing well. So I, I'm just not buying whatever you're, whatever you're trying to sell. I'm not buying it. Yes, Cynthia Menes, we've gotten the money. We've gotten rid of his wage. Oh, yes, $30 million from Chelsea for Cynthia Jimenez, and we continue to undo the curse of the Zinedine Zidane era. Oh, holy Lord, have mercy. We've got $100 million in our transfer budget, and we're ready to rock and roll. That's what I'm talking about. We've unloaded Hawk and Arner Heralds, and we have unloaded... Santiago Jimenez on Chelsea for 30 million. We are secure financially once again, and we stare into the abyss full of rampant optimism. Shock me like an electric eel. Hey, Dirks, thank you so much for the uh, the Prime. Thanks for supporting the stream. Don't forget to loan a winger. Nah. <laughs> do we need to do that? So he's still at the Gold Cup. Uh, Andas is working on a loan. We've got Nicholas Audrin, who has returned from his time abroad. We've got Zakiru Ziggy, who's returned from his time out on loan. But Audrin is not homegrown in England which is troubling. Um, he's under contract for some time, but the development seems to be kind of tapering off. He's a good Premier League player, allegedly. I liked him. I mean, when he was he was playing for us earlier, you know, he's bagged six goals in eight matches for Tottenham. The taint bad. Why do you want to loan him? He's not on the loan list. I won't get any money if I loan him. Shock me like an electric eel. All right. Other interest. Javi Guerra. People being interested in Guerra is very interesting to me because I love Javi Guerra. Okay, he doesn't want to move, but his contract's massive. I'm sorry. He's getting paid twenty and a half million a year. I can live with it because of how good he is, but it is like if somebody showed up with a hundred million for him, it would make sense for multiple reasons. You know what I'm saying? It would it would make sense for multiple reasons. Ooh, this is a perfect Saudi type signing. Looking to generate funds. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you in on a secret. I would sell him for a hundred million. I'm gonna reduce the asking price El Nasser El Eddie had in El Ali. Although I don't think they have the money to spend hundreds of millions of dollars anymore, unfortunately. I guess they just don't. They aren't given unlimited money here. Luca Jash, 19-year-old Aussie. Welcome to the team. So there, all right, all right, all right, all right. It's got like a first team out there, something resembling a first team. Where's Kieran Tell? Kieran, you are all day long going advance forward, brother. You are all day long. Dude, you're writing for Yvonne Alves right now? 
You're legitimately riding for Yvonne Alves right now. That is crazy. I actually think the best lineup might be Radjevic and Guerra out there together, and then Marcelo Enrique just continues to be the backup as the kind of bigger anchor guy. I think this is our – no, it's not. Where is Vandeven? I think this is our lineup without him, though. Where is uh, Jarrell? That's our lineup. And then Mujahid Kaya is like a super sub. What we could do is do that and then do like Mushaid Kaya uh, to just like sail forward behind Karen Tall and then just have him be like an advanced playmaker on support right here. It's a bit more structure than we've played with, but it plays with a really aggressive front four that keep the uh, other team under a lot of pressure. All right, then we got our 4 3 3 that we like. Um, definitely usually going to be an inside forward over there. Okay, um, this is going to be that, that, that. This is going to be there. This is going to – oh, no, wrong. Right. Right. Uh, all right, cool. This is not going to be built as a countering uh, formation as much as a match control formation. And then our third formation – we weren't really using a third formation slot last year. I am going to kind of mess around with this. <coughs> I think it's time, uh, given our ability as a team to... Well, uh, that. That, that. So that's our ultra aggressive formation. What do you guys think of that? What do you think of that there, boys? Marcello, thank you for the two years. <laughs> This is a 442 with a cooler name. Yeah, that's true. We're going to call this the sauce. That's the sauce. This is bread and butter. And this is... Snooze button. All right, we've got the sauce, we've got bread and butter, and then we've got the snooze button. We didn't take the steam out of the game. But uh, our primary tactic will make... Um, we'll set the sauce as the primary tactic. Uh, so this one key change I did want to make to this... I felt like we were turning the ball over too much um, last season, so I'm going to actually lower the tempo when we're playing in this formation. Uh, 
I, I, yeah, I think that's what we, uh, we should do. So I, I want to lower the tempo in that one, but we're going to play like really high tempo, just crazy aggressive in this formation. That's the bread and butter. That's the snooze button. All right. That's how I feel like our team is designed to set up this year. Feeling good about the way it looks, feeling good about our depth at every position right now. We're not short on anything. Uh, we'd love to add a little more ammunition so that we could go out and add like a center back or something. Um, league registration should be fine because we are spoiled with under 21s right now. Uh, I'll, I'll just make sure that we're looking good, but Hector Gamera is going to have to dip out. Um, oh, Ingley and McAvoy is no longer under 21, but it doesn't matter. Kieran Tall, all of those guys don't matter because they, um, they're grown in England and so they're going to be registered. No problem. Audrin's sitting there. He's good to go. So everybody that's not in there is under 21 or Hector Gamera, who we're looking to transfer, which means we do have one spot left in our league registration, even if like all of these guys are in there. Really, the only guy that I'm thinking probably wouldn't be in there is Audrin, at least out of the non-homegrown collective. We're going to lock that in right now. Get everybody feeling good about their life. I'm going to be called the bread and butter and it's not the primary tactic because I feel like we're going to use the sauce a lot. But we've got that set up early. We've got a feel for how we want to play this year. We've got a bit more of a possession control uh, tactic. Lower tempo bread and butter and then the sauce and the snooze button. Very, very useful, the snooze button to help snooze a game, perhaps. Okay, uh, atmosphere is good. Leadership support is good. Hector Gamera is on the move. Unhappy to no longer feel wanted by the club. I uh, I thought we thought we solved that. Thought that wasn't a uh, wasn't an issue. Coyote, I like you a lot. I think you're a really good player. Do you want me to just keep saying those words out loud? Like, what what reassurances do you need? Uh, players released by English clubs. At least give him a trial. Some hour, I would assume he's very slow now, yes. We are responsible for a few of these guys. Wait, Bernardo Silva didn't retire. He's like, nah, dude, I'm still playing. 147 caps for uh, Portugal. I'm still going. What do you even mean? Harry Wilson's still going. Diogo Dallo finally has been released. Honestly, still not a bad player. Somebody's already bid for him. St. Etienne and Al Taiwoon. They're recognizing that. Man City released Yukinare Sugawara. Oh, Matoma's available for free, dude. It's crazy out here. The inspiration for... Um, the inspiration for King Kazu Kanda's takeover. And then, of course, Vicario. You know, nobody's offered him a contract yet, and that's uh, that's quite sus. Thierry Henry is available on an end of contract. Mr. 20 jumping reach nightmare to deal with. Don't worry. I'm, key I, I, I'm keeping an eye on him. I'm keeping an eye on him. So, Detry. We need to move Detry. No longer on, on loan. He's unavailable for loan. Detry's on the transfer list, and his asking price is way above his value. Not happy with that on the high side, but not that much. I'd be happy with 19 million. All right. Well, then we are going to offer out Ismail Detry for 19 million. And we'll start that process now. Gilles Inse Mba. Man, what asking price do you feel is with your value exactly? I have a contract extension clause. I don't want to take it. I don't think you're very good. 
Cohen Beagle's at least a decent player. Do we have a uh, do I uh, trigger my contract extension? Yes. But I'm going to send him out on loan. This guy's showing some real ability here, even though his star rating hasn't really caught up with that improvement in his ability. I have a contract extension? No. I'm going to have... Oh, I do. Okay, we're going to trigger that, and we'll offer him out for loan. Youth team management right here, dude. Youth team management. That's why they pay me the big bucks. I expect both of these guys to not be very good. We can already see Mat uh, Matoma's attributes. I just want to see how bad, it, uh, how fast he's getting worse. So he's still right now exactly where his attributes are okay, especially if he doesn't want crazy money. But he will get unreasonable quickly if he just gets way worse all of a sudden. Okay, Guatemala just beat Mexico. And they still got knocked out in the group stage because Barbados beat them. What is going on? Would anyone care to enlighten me? Because I thought I was just getting Francisco Rosales back because he just lost to Guatemala, but I guess that's not how any of this works. Where do I see how long my transfer ban lasts? Dude, that's got to be somewhere on the club info screen, but I'll be honest, I've never managed a club that has a transfer ban before. Did you go into administration or something, or did you take over a club that was, like, really up against it? Yusuf uh, Nochukwu. That's the speed. That's the speed that can make the difference. I'm glad my scouts are finding those guys. That's important. Yeah, like if I was looking for that, I'd be on the FFP screen. But I'm thinking it's like on club info somewhere. Like a, like like when you you know, when you go to um like this type of screen they'll be like oh there's a transfer ban or something. Okay, are they working on the? It doesn't really say where the like. Uh, oh, okay, there we go. Started, completed in four months, training facilities. Okay, found it. Did I already call Casper back? I can't do that for, like, seven more days. He's going to join us mid-tour in the U.S. He has no idea yet. That, that's what I'm talking about. 136 million from PSG for Hendrick, that's what I'm talking about. That's the amount of money that's got me oogling, okay? That's the amount of money that's got me oogling. Championship, regular starter in the championship, boom, yeah. That's a great level for Zekiru Zigi. Go out there and claim it. No, don't spend on somebody else, damn it. <laughs> don't spend on somebody else. What are you doing? So Regovic is only getting a light influence from that group. That's brutal. That's absolutely brutal. If they want him, they gotta, you know, put in the offer for him. That'll be that'd be fine. All right, Andas. You got a developmental chance, you go play at Fulham and life will be good. All right, we have money though. We've had money for a whole day and I haven't done anything with it. What am I doing? England McAvoy commits his future. We love to see that. I had money for a whole day chat and I haven't spent it. What is wrong with me? I mean, seriously. Am I even trying? So Rosario Renai, wait, he's only um potentially just a hundred million to get Rosario Renai in. I mean, but how many wingers could I pot? 
He averages 4.58 dribbles per 90. I mean, he leads Syria. Seventh in high intensity sprints. He is a very good pressure player as well. Top 10 in pressures attempted and completed. Eighth in average rating in the entire league. 15 Italy caps at 20 years old. You have three players just like, shut up. Okay. <laughs> Let me stare at him. This is just Italian Macintosh. Hey, all right, but Macintosh has sucked recently. So I've got that fresh in my mind. Also, he's not Italian Macintosh. He's faster. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. He's a better frontline defensive player than Macintosh. I mean, he's he's more athletic than Macintosh, which is hard to do, right? He also allegedly has more room to grow. All right. One, one crisis at a time, all right? I get distracted every time I look at Rosario Renai, all right? Every time I look at Rosario Renai, I look deep into his eyes, and I am, I'm seduced by that ability that I see. He pulls me forward or something. I... Give me defenders. So Fabian Levy, uh, the 22-year-old defender. <sighs> Very sharp passer. I uh, could deal with the pressure right away. Inconsistency is a bit of a problem. He is a dirty player. He picks up cards. <laughs> he is a dirty player. Inter is currently interested in a transfer for the 22-year-old Frenchman Fabien Levy. He is right-footed, which is, for some reason, a very hard thing for me to come by at center back all of a sudden. The other center backs we have are Ben El Hojej, who I, I still like. Uh, he was, why well, he wants to leave the club and like a ton of different teams are interested in him because I don't think Cardiff got promoted. Yeah, they they were down, they finished 13th in the championship. This guy's got to feel like his entire career is wasting away. Good size, not nearly as sharp of a passer. Um, he's got kind of the right mindset. He's also English native grown and cheaper. We don't know how much he could grow into it. And then, of course, there's Alexa, but he's too expensive right now. And he hasn't developed as much as I would have hoped in his last two years at Saint at the end. Uh, uh, boy, he's an athlete, though. That balance, that speed, the raw athleticism. I'll we'll open up into the player search here. Don't seem to be a lot of unbelievable players out there right now. Worrell is Real Madrid's center back. He's completely out of the price range and actually hates big matches. They sold it for $31 million. Oh, that is painful. The five aggression, though, is weird. Don't even really know how that would play.
Those are the English grown players. No immediately presentable options, so let's take a look around. 29 year old Hincapi, who would be available for a cool 100 million. Romero, who we sold to Al Etihad to empty ourselves of his absolutely gargantuan wage. John Paul Van Heck. Matteo Muccioli, of course, they've already got their hands on him at Manchester United. There's not a lot of great center backs out there, you know. Don't seem to be a lot of amazing center backs out there. Like, this dude's got two caps for friggin' Italy. It just seems like they're just... There's a lack of top-level center backs out there. Which, of course, brings us to... Mark Rodriguez. Also, Palma apparently could play uh, center back, but he's only got 10 jumping reach. He could never play there for long. Then there's the incredibly weird Mark Rodriguez, the striker, center midfielder, center back that literally can be a, an impact player out of all three of those positions. See, that's awesome. I'm glad you're having a good time here, dude. Eighty five million is a lot of money, Chad. 85 million is a lot of money. That is all the money that we pulled together with some pretty darn good financial decisions. Then you can sell Skoda. Is there even a market for Skoda? I also don't really want to sell Skoda. I guess I could. There's not really a market for Simone Skoda. But he'd be uh he'd prefer to stay. We'll offer him out. We'll offer him out. We'll see. I'm gonna sit for a day or two. We'll see if there's a market for Skoda. Because if we can draw if we can swap Skoda for Mark Rodriguez, I'll do it. Like, financially speaking. If we can swap Skoda for Mark Rodriguez, that's a deal you do in a heartbeat. Let me cook. That was a good thought. That was a good thought, Chet. Let me cook. Let me cook on that for a few days. Let me cook on that for a few days. All right, we got 26 transfer offers. I'm assuming that's all, like, loan stuff from an offer out a little while ago. Fajiki, yeah, you know what? I'm just as mad as anybody that Liverpool's got the amazing wonder kid. Oh, Rosario Renai potential is capped, so he is no longer a more attractive-looking player. At least it seems that he doesn't have any more room to grow, is what they're trying to tell us.
But yeah, we have our eyes peeled for more center backs. It's just like there's not, not a lot of them out there that are that are great. Toshiaki, Ozaki, uh, why? I mean, Japan's got a lot of good players that are lurking around. This dude is not, his ability has not changed at all. My scouts just keep falling more and more in love with Romari Ohila. And I totally get it. And there, you know, there's a reason that he is looking like he's going to leave uh, MLS here soon. Okay, it's offer, well, two more offers for Ziggy. Fair enough. Oh, no, those are zero wage. Were the other ones zero wage? No, they were... Uh... Oh, yes, they were zero wage. Well, and I should have waited for the full wage offers. My bad. Luke Collins, loan offer at Blackpool. You know what, Luke? I uh, We hadn't really thought this through, but let's go ahead and try to get people that actually can afford you. You're an expensive date, you know? Stuttgart, that's a weird move. Oh, there's another loan going on for Zanini. Hold on. Is he on the loan market again? Oh, they want him to be tested in a different environment. So he's not on the loan market for me. He's on the loan market for them. Well, that is exclusionary. No offers for Gamera. Oh, come on. The price is too high. Pereira stayed at St. Etienne. Oh, that's so flattering, actually, for them. All right, Maximus Sargent, do we get any championship offers? No. Well, then I'm going to send him to the Jupiler Pro League. That's the best league that offered. Actually, the Portuguese league. Sorry. Uh, Alverica. You get, yeah, wherever you feel more comfortable. That would be, Either one of those works for me, dude. Beagle, you're going to apparently Portugal as well. I don't know how that's um I don't know how that keeps happening, but going Beagle at 18 years old, you're already club grown, right? I don't need to worry about trying to add that. Yeah, sweet. You go play in Portugal for a year, dude. Detry for 19 million. Bournemouth wants Ismael Detry for 19 million. That is a free $20 million from a dude from the Academy. We take that every single time. What does White Star's disappearing means? That your player turned 22 and they've refined their projection for his potential ability. That's all it means. Nothing scary. You didn't do anything wrong. It's just your player turned 22 years old. <laughs> Paulo Costa. Hey, that's another talented player. Giovanni Palma. You're good. I'm sure you'd be fun to have. All right. First match, well, I guess first preseason match here. Don't even have one of my goalkeepers. Ridiculous. Three seasons in a row, they loaned out their best player. Yeah, they're a bit, uh, they're a bit weird over there at, at Lazio. Don't think they quite know what's going on. We are going to be short that one winger, though, obviously. PSG, Leverkusen, and Nice are sniffing around Mark Rodriguez. Like, I'm trying, all right? Simone, Skoda, Dortmund, Juventus, Porto, and Barcelona are all apparently interested. That's awesome. I'll take $40 million for Hector Gamera. Please and thank you. Ooh, these loan offers? Or are they something exciting? Delaying offers. Oh, Pedro Bravo's available for free. Look, I know my scouts hate this guy, but I like him. 
I loved him enough to bring him to St. Etienne for 1.8 million. I know my scouts absolutely loathe this guy, but I like him. He's better than the two stars that they're giving him. Hey, what ended up happening in the Euro qualifying? Oh, we're going to Pence. <laughs> George and Greece are going to go to penalties for uh, for a spot in the Euros. We're definitely going to follow along with that. Uh, South Sudan and South Toby, Principe are nil-nil. Bahrain's beaten Nepal. Jordan's beaten Pakistan. Syria's beaten Myanmar. UAE's beating Yemen, so no surprises between all of that. Uh, or all of those. Kuwait's hanging with Qatar right now, which could really mess with that group. That's going to put India in danger if Kuwait's able to get a point off Qatar. Probably won't happen. We'll see. Um, you said the, uh, oh yes, the Virgin Derby. World Cup qualifying in CONCACAF is undefeated. The British Virgin Islands and the U.S. Virgin Islands, it's the second leg. It was 1-1. In the U.S., now we're in the British Virgin Islands. You think that's where the money, yeah, that's where the hay's getting made right there. A little nil-nil. <laughs> India's already in date. Yeah, India got one point from two matches against Afghanistan, which put it in a lot of trouble because it looked like it was going to be a really comfortable qualifying campaign for them. Now it really looks like it's not. <laughs> now it's really looking like it is not going to be a comfortable qualifying campaign for them. Thomas Apostolou. I wish you were better. I know you already got eight caps for the Greek national team, Apostolou, but you're not good enough. You're not good enough. Enter just made an offer for Hendrik. Oh, let's see what we can do here, lads. Let's see what it is. 71 million up front. Uh, Gerardo Guzman stayed. Palawa stayed. So we just went 0 for 2 trying to pick up uh, new scouts, which is embarrassing. We also struck out on the other set piece couch. So I'm going to go with Luca Veloci, who is the guy we always wanted anyways. Then we're going to get a recruitment team, and we are going to check out our new chief scout, nobody. And then we're going to come here and we are going to sign somebody. Christopher Vivelle. I would like for you to be a scout in my scouting department, Christopher Vivelle. Please and thank you. And then I'm going to go to my recruitment staff. I think I actually already have somebody that's judging, you know, it's 2020. Uh, that's the, you know, sees the vision. Um, Matthias Schwezig. And we can just improve one of these guys to be the chief scout. Javier Ribalta. Uh, yeah, let's let's uh, promote Javier Ribalta, uh, Ribalta. So chief scout. Oh, he wants a lot more money. Okay. Well, goodness gracious, Javier, I don't want to pay you the GDP of a small country here. Slow down. Take a deep breath. You're already get you're getting a promotion and a pay raise, Javier. This is exactly what you dreamed of, Javier. They're telling me I apparently you know, I can't go after Guzman again. It's like you liars. Okay, down to the UV guy. Daniel Bayer. We could get Daniel Bayer. We could steal somebody from Bayern. That's that's okay. All right, and the Indrick offer. What do you guys think? What do you think we start at? Like 125? They said 71. There's no guarantee he'll take it if we get a good uh, deal here. 115. We're moving in the right direction. 110. I feel like we're close. I feel like we're close to a big Endrick deal. Those are not the offers that I thought we were going to get for Simone Skoda. This dude scored 14 goals in the Premier League last year, by the way, just in case you guys weren't paying attention. 
He's also quite young. He's quite young! Yeah, I know there was a 1.1 million compensation fee. I just don't care. All right. So the interest in Simone Skoda, a little unfounded because nobody seems to be willing to pay the amount of money that we would want. For Simone Scota. All right, so Beagle, Sergeant, Detre is going to give us 20 million. So there is 19, you know, 18 more million coming in. We're going to be at about 120 million transfer budget wise. Scotty, thank you for the 27 months, dude. Thank you for supporting the stream. I appreciate you. Scotty Ribbon. Oh, yeah. About the garbage man? Look, I like the garbage man. I really do. Oh, shoot. We weren't tracking the penalties. How many have been taken? None. Nice. Oh, wait. Oh, my goodness. It's one nothing. Um... It's one nothing Georgia. Georgia's up one nothing in the shootout, dude. They're up two nothing in the shootout. Georgia's never been, right? It's two nothing in the shootout right now. Greece is about to have its uh second attempt. I don't think Georgia's ever been. They've I know they've never been to the World Cup. They have never been to the Euros. They have never been to the Euros. If they win this penalty shootout, Georgia will be playing at the Euros for the first time. Greece has only missed one pen, though. Koshrishvili and Davidishvili have scored. The pin for Greece. Good. Masuras makes it 2 1. The pressure stays on Georgia. To hold its nerve. Now, I'm assuming we're going to get a penalty from Giannis Constantelius here as well, right? Now, when Georgia had players in the Soviet national team, so it's not like Georgia's never had a team to root for at the Euros before, but it's never made the Euros as its own country. Oh, they missed! Oh, they've missed! It's a miss for Georgia! Mikwa Tadze! My boy, Mikwa, Georgia's Mikwa Tadze, the 23-year-old player for Mets in France has missed the penalty and, and Greece can tie it up with their third attempt. Farzoff injured? Oh, that sucks. I mean, that really sucks for them. He's obviously their superstar. Miku Itadze with the miss. Got to be one of their better players, too. Scored it. Andreas Buschalakis from Hertha Berlin in the Zweite Bundesliga. And Greece, the so often unkillable Greeks, are still alive. It's 2-2 after three rounds of penalties. Where is this being played? Oh, they're playing in Georgia. I guess Georgia did something to uh, be the... Um, be the host nation or they were the seeded team or something. So this is in Tbilisi and it's 2-2 after three penalties.
Just luck of the draw being first. Oh, that's crazy. They scored it. It's 4-3. Lasha Dvali of Apoel in Cyprus. 3-2, Georgia, fourth penalty for Greece. We are on serve in the penalty shootout. Where is Giannis Constantelius? We know he's on the field. We know Giannis is on the field. Oh, dang it. I'm making sure Giannis is on the field. <laughs> he is. He has a yellow card as well. Oh, they missed! Giorgios Giacomakis of Atlanta United. And Georgia's one penalty away from going to the Euros for the first time. Oh, he missed it. Giacomakis. Apparently, you guys said he missed the goal. Had to be the dude from MLS, too, clearly. Hey, the guy from the French League missed. Nobody said anything. Yeah, that's it. That means they scored. Georgia's going to the Euros for the first time ever as an independent nation. The Ashvili's and the Karas, the Georgians are going. Who scored it? It hasn't even popped up. They're too busy celebrating. They haven't even updated who scored the fifth penalty. It's just they scored. It's over. Georgia won. A blistering nil-nil. A Georgian player got a red card, and he wasn't even on the pitch, which, nice. Well done, dude. Constantelius didn't even get to take a penalty. You know what? That's why they failed. They didn't give Giannis Constantelius a penalty. But congratulations to Georgia. Congratulations to Georgia. Well done to the Georgians. Onward and upward for Georgia. They are in the Euros for the first time ever. Greece is still well and truly mudded. Dang it, Endrick. Dang it, brother. Dude, I really, really, really want the offer to come in for Gonzalo Inacio because I will accept it. I will accept it with speed. When is this? Mid-August? I don't even have, like, the match on the calendar yet for some reason. I, I... You're asking me to schedule for all this stuff. I don't even know what's happening, man. It's crazy out there. Yeah, but that does bring us the rest of the matches are going to kick off now. Now that Georgia's going through, which congratulations to Georgia. That's huge. We always love a debutante. It's Wales, Poland, Ukraine, and Iceland for the last two spots in the Euros now that Georgia is going to the Euros. No surprises here. Qatar still has it scored. suppose that's a bit of a surprise. And the old Virgin Derby is still level after three halves of good old football. Ben El Hajaj. I am... I am torn. I do not know what to do here. We've got a lot of money. But Rodriguez is very expensive. I feel like we're one big logical sale away from a lot of different things making sense. Okay, so Nkunku's a little old. Uh, we'll go ahead and remove that. Preston want Beagle. I, I I don't think they do, though, is the thing. See, I've already, um, I've already got a good deal for him, so no. We're going to sign a new deal. Bulmer. Okay, cool. A lot of good things happening. The Virgins will never score. Joke's on you, dude. They already scored. 
It's 1-1 after the first leg. So, uh, yeah, didn't see that coming. Ojaj and Mark Rodriguez are the right options. I don't know, dude. Uh, give me what's what's an asking price? Be happy with that asking price. I I just feel like Simone Skoda should be drawing a lot more financial interest than he is. And that first round of offers did not inspire me at all to believe that we will be able to flip him for an actual amount of money. Okay. Maybe we give this a try. Maybe we give a Nicholas Audrin offer out a try. Maybe that'll pop up with a surprising like $40, $45 million offer that will free us up in the transfer window even more. Obviously, this whole Hector Gamera thing is a little frustrating that it looks like we're going to get under $40 million for him. Just scrambled a little bit. Scrambled a little bit. Luca Jash is worth $63 to $74 million, which is awesome. Uh, Ligue 1? Oh, my goodness. That's a Ligue 1 offer for Luke Collins. What the hell is Auger doing? They want this guy in their team? Auger, you got some problems, brother. If that's uh, if that's the guy that's going to make the difference for you and you're paying a million for the privilege, you have got some problems. See, there we go. Nice 3-1 win. Kaya and a couple of goals for Kieran Tall. Kiths and Jacob turns professional with his new contract. We need to find a loan for that guy yesterday. I know, dude. We just watched the... Uh, okay, fine. I will show you guys that Yvonne Alves would cost about $8 billion. All right? Is that what you wanted to know? I Oh, I'm actually... The scouting is in progress on him right now. Uh, the problem is we only have 538 guys here. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and find him, and I will prioritize him for you guys. But he is... That release clause is expired, and Yvonne Alves is about as expensive as possible. You rejected a loan to the top league of Portugal? Gowan. 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 Brother. What the hell? It's the top Portuguese league, man. Go. We don't care do it anyways. Yeah, I'm just, you got to trust me now to do, you know, do what's right by the club. You know, you've got to do what's right by the club and uh, and make sure we make the appropriate deals, you know? Gotta make sure we make the appropriate deals. What's Zanini's contract and buyout? We can go look. Got a couple offers. I don't know um, what they're for. They want Pejo Butina. Their scouts are wild in right now. Or mine are wrong. Those are both possible. Murphy Matumbo. Oh, big old loan fee to have him go play there. We give an ultimatum to Salt of Aragon. Tika Busanda. Oh, that's the scout. Okay. All these guys will be fine. Jao Ferreira's decided to go off and be a scout at Newcastle instead. The audacity of that man. There is interest, though, so watch this space. Yeah, look at all that interest, dude. Look at all that transfer interest. Is that what you're... Look at that crazy amount of transfer interest that's lurking around right now. That's insane. Wow, man, that's crazy. Okay. Uh, trying to survive my first championship season at Burton Albion, having a rough start with two games won and one game ending in a draw. Uh, out of the uh, current six games played while also having a very busy summer window. Any advice on avoiding the bottle effect and getting relegated? The jump up from League One to the championship is one of the toughest ones in the game. You have to really shift your mentality from, like, we're going to dominate every game we play to, like, the art of survival. Oftentimes, it's the tactic. The tactic that you use to succeed in League Two and League One is not necessarily effective, but if you get too scared, then it can snowball. If you invite too much pressure, then you're going to get, you know, you're going to get steamrolled. So you don't want to do that either. Um, it's tricky. You're in a, you're in a tricky spot. 
you're in a spot that a lot of people get uh get stuck in. The real key is that being in the championship makes you a really, really desirable loan location, particularly for Premier League clubs. You have to mind that. If you've not maxed out your loans, uh, then you you failed yourself. And Premier League drop downs on an end of contract are also super valuable uh, if you can make that work. Get a uh, get a good old Premier League drop down. Any tips for going for the championship to the prim? Yeah, it took me four years, dude, when I did it. it I, I spent four years in the championship, and then we still barely got out, even though we had a monster season. One of those drop-down teams just kind of right on our heels and made it really difficult on us. Um, so that was really tricky. Okay, looking to generate funds, looking to generate funds, looking at, you don't want to make an offer while the asking price is so high. Well, you're just, you know, you're just needy and in the way. So the best thing you can do is cultivate your end of contract and loan shortlists, get any senior affiliates that you can get your hands on, hang on to them for dear life. And you've got to be savage with your team because there's a lot of guys that'll be on your team that really helped you win in league one that are not good enough to be in the championship at the level you want to be at. So I think people also get screwed by the fact that they're a little too emotionally attached to some of the players they're using. And it's just over, you know? And then the uh, Marley, you keep asking about the uh, the footedness. So, ooh, quarterfinal, Cuba made it. And Barbados lost to Mexico and Canada as the cream rises here. Suriname and Haiti, and then the USA, Martinique. Curacao, Costa Rica, mudded, finished behind Martinique and Haiti. Yikes. Panama finished behind Cuba. Yikes. Come true. Oh, okay. It's becoming apparent to me that we are not going to find any more amazing options here. We're going to have to just make it work with what we've got going on. So what are, what are the bids? going to be a lot of money. 90, 93 million coming in for Arda Goulart. Is that United and Enter? How do you end up on Ajax anyways? 39 million? That's kind of crazy. Georgique Fernandzi, Igor Jorge. He's not good at all. Okay. Uh, Saldivarigan withdraw their bid for Murphy Matumbo. Fair enough. But yeah, so the footedness of center backs. Sorry. People favor like a left footed center back on the left and a right footed center back on the right because having the dominant foot on the outside side uh, prevents the way that teams typically press. So the press is normally trying to, uh, like, force you, like, compact space, right? But if you have your outside foot as your dominant foot, then you're able to more efficiently pass the ball to the outside. Um, but I'm going to be honest, I started to, it's not as important as people make it out to be. I started to predominantly left-footed center backs last season. It's just when you have a, a center back whose foot is on the inside, you need to have somebody they can pass to as a center midfielder, right? Because their outside foot isn't going to be as good or as sharp to get that ball to a fullback to just get it out of the press. It's like, it's more of um people just really fetishize like left-footed center backs <laughs> because obviously there's less left-footed players. Um, so it's just something that people really fixate on is making sure they get a left-footed center back on the left side. You don't need that. You don't need it. Does it, yeah, so on wide center backs, if you're playing with a wide center back, you want their outside foot to be dominant because they're playing crosses with it. And they're playing down that line. So a wide center back's completely different consideration, you know? Okay, Joshua Concedlo. I am going to look for another very good loan for you, my good man. 
Hopefully we can get a championship team that comes in and says they want you. Okay, there's that, there's that, there's that. We got a lot of things going on. Jesus Real, Mushait Kaya is progressing to a new level in his game. I think he's just a good player. I don't know what to tell you. I have a very you have excellent club atmosphere, strong backing of the squad, intensive language course. Let's go. Sprechen Z English, my dude. So no Rosales. Yes, Audrin. Yes, Cadcidlo. That'll leave us with um Yeah, a few of these guys. Um anybody else that has high potential that we're leaving out? Ziggy and Collins are leaving. I guess Ed Hill. You can come hang out. If you so desire, Edward, everybody else is leaving. So that leaves us at 42 dudes hanging out at the U.S. training camp that we're holding. Can you propose to certain leagues? You mean like transfers to certain leagues? I actually think so. Bruh. Oh, wow. Seven million. Wow, that's a tempting offer. Um, whew. Excuse me. I'm getting a little sweaty here. Just thinking about all seven million of those dollars. Wait, was it a bad goal that Pickford allowed? I mean, I, I'm here for that, if it was. Love that. Let's see if we can uh, see if we can find it. Uh, maybe England. England's losing. No, I don't think anybody's uploaded the goal yet. A shame. Yeah, I've got a note to recall my keeper on the ninth. We are going to recall him, of course. Oh, Kiss and Jacob sucks. The only teams that want him are in League Two. That's weird. All right, going. Looks like nobody wants you as an important player. My apologies. We'll go back to regular starter. Do you think $7 million in $1 bills is enough to swim in? Almost definitely. $7 million $1 bills? I feel like you could fill up a bathtub with that. A swimming pool, no. A bathtub, probably. Gamera, well, Dortmund's got $28 million there. Bristol City's in the Premier League. They've thrown down $24 million and a percent profit of next sale. Oh, keep that and look for 40, and they just walked. Okay. So the value of this is 28. I am now becoming aware that I will probably not get the money that I want. So I'm going to go with a $50 million, a $53 million transfer offer, but like deferred. Come on. That's not, that's only a lot more money than you thought. Like, seriously? <laughs> That's only a lot more money than you wanted to pay. Like, I don't understand what the issue is. What's like $25 million between friends, really? Yeah, I feel like the world just doesn't have the same values that it used to have, clearly. 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 Oh. Hey, Sean, thank you for the 16 months, dude. Maximo, thank you for the six months. Thank you guys for supporting the stream. And uh, Bomb Squad, thank you for the 31 months. Accept it and then, offer, and then drive the price up by offering them out. 
Ugh, probably. I, I, you know what I would want to do is sign Bin Al Hajaj and get rid of Vuskovic. Feel like that could be that could be a, a pro move. I wonder why there's so many guys here. <laughs> what is this? Charity? Come on. Well, Fred Vuskovic again, and then maybe we entertain El Hajaj. What's the transfer strategy? We already signed a striker, which we were really into that. You sure this dude isn't interested in moving at all? He feels like a competent, ball-winning defensive midfielder. All right, all right, I'm going to do a little comparison. I don't want this to anger anybody. I just want to look. All right, this one's too hard on my eye, I'm going to be honest. Check DMs, got gotcha. you. Mark is way better. Well, I mean, the thing about Mark is that he can also play multiple positions. So, yes, I would believe, I believe that he is. Uh, Mitch, thank you for the 38 months, dude. I appreciate you. Thank you for supporting the stream. Thank you for over three years of supporting the stream. Oh. Mark's also a mentality monster. Sets the tone with that determination and aggression. Flies in. Is Levy your bet? No, 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 no. He's not on my team either. My best central defenders are... Um, Jarrell Hato, who is very good, and Gonzalo Inacio, who is very good. Both those guys were – that was our starting center back pairing for last season. Very competent pair of players um, that we don't mind. But there is a rumor floating around that Gonzalo Inacio could be on the move for a really significant pile of money. Um. We'll float him again. It says he's open to speaking to other clubs. I don't want to set him off the way I set off uh, Michael K. O'Day. Don't worry, yes, my old dad tree is, is going to be leaving. Hector Gamero, we're working on his transfer. So the only upset is K. O'Day just felt forced out because we offered him out too much too quickly. And I don't want that to happen with um, Inacio. But I do want to try and initiate something there. This dude's six foot eight. I know he's over two meters tall. He's pretty crazy. Uh, and then he also just has the ability to play striker. It could also step into the midfield. He is an incredibly versatile kind of Swiss army knife player that we found a little while ago and we really like, but he's on an $85 million release clause that is obviously pricey, right? And it, it is a little bit prohibitive. Ah, uh, is there any reason not to sign this guy? I'm talking one-year contract, chat. Well, I'll tell you, his defense is sneaky bad. 11 marking, 12 tackling, 14 position, uh, positioning is not a great trinity of defensive attributes. Just keeping an eye on him. 
I'm just keeping an eye on him, chat. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even doing anything, man. I'm just keeping an eye on him. I'm not, I'm not even doing anything. Yeah, but I, I, we're set on advanced playmakers. We'd be signing him to make an impact elsewhere, you know? Yeah, if his wage isn't bad and he wants a one-year deal, it makes a lot of sense, actually, to want to, to want to bring him in. The biggest issue would be wedging him into the registration wherever we happen to find space. Oh, yeah, my board. Uh, you're right, you're right, you're right. My board does not want me to buy uh, players over the age of 30. They, if we did it one time, they wouldn't get fired instantly, right? <laughs> if, they, if they might did it one time, they wouldn't lose their mind, right? We'd be fine. We would be fine. Sign Alves for Neymar-type money. I mean, I have prioritized our... Um, I forgot how to reset this. There we go. We have prioritized our scouting of Yvonne Alves. And apparently there are like Manchester United is lurking around Yvonne Alves. Our former wonder kid who has been at Hoffenheim. He's still only 22, which is amazing. He's still very, very young. As a uh, as a player, Sasuolo don't want to spend adult money on that move. Gamera, please. Gonzalo and Ostia could be the real splashy transfer, but I don't think those teams that are sitting in Saudi Arabia actually have the money anymore. I think I think it's all fool's gold, man. I think it's all fool's gold, man. The Greek God just got eliminated from I know. We watched the penalty shootout. Um Well, we didn't watch it, but we tracked the penalty shootout. I cannot believe he's going on loan to Auger. That makes absolutely no sense. Luke, have a great year, man. Get you some serious development playing in the French League. I, I can't believe that loan's happening. Good news is. Okay, I oh, I guess he's already on my team. We can recall our starting goalkeeper for the season, old Casper Gongsted. Welcome to the team, brother. Fly straight to the U.S. so you can be on the field for a. Uh... You'd be uh, you'd be on the field for a friendly. Hey, hey, Gongsted, let's go, man. Get it in gear, Gongsted. Get it in gear, man. We need you in the U.S. yesterday, Casper. There's my reminder to recall my keeper. Ah, I already saw it on the little thing. All right, Mac. Yes. Thank you. And we're back. A mystery tycoon's looking to buy Tottenham. That's the second time that's been rumored. We're impressed with what Gongstead's done on loan, and we want to we wanna bring him in. Clicked on the wrong thing. All right, concede low. I'm assuming this is because you don't want to play anywhere. Is that why this is happening, Katsidlo? You think you're going to be a first-team player for us, so you don't want to go on loan anywhere that wants you? Hato is a left back. My coach clearly, uh, my, my staff clearly thinks that's a good idea and then put Vandevin in as a center back. Those, that, that's what they're working on. All right, Ribalta, July 10th. Awesome, tomorrow. Awesome. Very good. Oh, there we go. Got one. We're fishing with dynamite. We scouted the entire U20 World Cup, and we got one. Fernando, Fernando Aguirre, 16 years old, hanging out at Banfield.
Oh, blessed be thy scouting staff. And here is a midfielder who is already a worth over $100 million. That would be Rion Fernandez. That's the guy on Chelsea who is 16. Absolutely absurd. Ridiculous. Phil McWilliams. Real shame that dude sucks. Because I am all for that name. Oh, I can't trust potential this year, man. 40 to 57 million. You don't want to put that kind of bet in on somebody who really kind of sucks right now. I can't trust potential this year. I, I just, I don't know. I don't know for sure, you know? That makes me so sad. It's the type of guy I would have sent it on previously, but we live and we learn. I don't, I, I, I don't know. There, there's a really good chance that his potential is not actually that good. Yo, SYS is up. Yes. Everybody say thank you, I all. Thank you, I all. The SYS forum is up in the subsection of the Discord. I know a lot of you guys have subscribed today. If you've done that, you can get in the subscriber section of the Discord. And now, if your save is in need of help, you can submit it for SYS, which will be done tomorrow. It will be done live the way we've been doing it recently. So if you are around tomorrow and uh, you need some advice on your save, you got a question, something you're curious about, something you don't understand, what have you, you can throw it in Save Your Saves and you might get pulled tomorrow. And because it's a quick turnaround and because we're doing it live now, there are always a lot less submissions now. People, you know, people don't want to be on the uh, the camera, which means if you submit, there is actually a pretty good chance that you're going to end up on there. Just a little inside information, you know. Just a little inside info. Do with that insider trading information as you wish. We're getting a Wednesday stream now, dude. We don't save uh, we don't save saves on stream anymore. Um, we actually did used to do that. The first uh, the first time SYS was ever done was like live, if I remember right. I think we just kind of had people throw their saves in the Discord, and we all just kind of clicked around them together. That was a very long time ago, but I believe that was the first time. We did it was live. Oh, good. I'm glad to see there's no brutal copy pastas going around. I can play the, um, I can <laughs> chatty caught us. Dang. How did he know? No, I, 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 I can put the circus music on again if you want. I earned it. We, as a, as a club, we earned it. We failed to win trophies that we had a very, very good shot at winning. We totally earned it. We went above and beyond earning the circus music and the pain. Come on. Boo. Boo. Well, you're telling me there aren't two Wonder Kid Australian goalkeepers at the same time? What is even going on? Going Beagle. Why is he not in? Well, I'll, let me talk to you about this. You want to see me get out of business? We've received a loan offer. I'm totally not sure about going. I think it's great for your development. Uh, Best chance of playing. Yeah. I don't want to go there. Give me a reason, going. What the hell just happened? He's level-headed. I've never tried to do that sort of conversation before, but, like, what just happened? He's not even controversial or unprofessional. 
He didn't even give me a reason why he doesn't want to go to it. It's a team in the top flight of Portugal, dude. You get to go play in the sixth best league in Europe. What do you, what's the problem? He has feelings. I don't, I mean, his feelings make no sense. He has feelings. They don't make any sense. Rivalta. All right. Yeah, we got to fire our old chief scout and promote Javier Rivalta. Awesome. Congratulations, Javier, on the promotion. All right, guys. We've got a lot of money, but we're going to spend it on Thursday. He refuses to leave London. Yeah, that's good Brexit mentality there from going Beagle. He does. He, he, dude's just singing rural Britannia in the shower like, I'm not going to Portugal unless it's on vacation. <laughs> but thank you, guys. Great stream today. We did make very important signings. Like, Kieran Tall, I think, is going to be hugely important. Uh, we cashed in some money for Giannis Constantelius. Uh, we managed to figure out our goalkeeping situation and bring in a wonder kid from Argentina. Uh, thank you guys for all the subs. Love you guys. Fist bump. We got a lot of good things done today, but we do have that like that one kind of splash signing. I think it might be Mark, but I want to move Inacio or at least Hector Gamera before we do that. Like we got to figure out a deal that makes sense for us uh, that I feel like we, you know, because I don't want to, what I don't want to do, what I really, really don't want to do is sign... Uh, I, I don't want to sign Mark Rodriguez and not have ammunition to go out and get another player for at least like 50 million. And so we're going to have to sort out who's leaving for that to happen. And then obviously we need to bolster up the center back position, but that's where we're, we're working on that. We're definitely working on that. Hey, I just found somebody use a hammer that's streaming. I totally recognize the name. This person is, uh, they've gifted a lot of uh, subs over the years and is like a hammer that I recognize from the chat. And they're streaming. So let's make this one hype, guys. Uh, I'll see you on Thursday. I, you know, but you don't have to miss me that much. If you follow the Zealandism channel, then you know. I'll fill out SYS. If you want to be a part of Save Your Saves, it is up in the subscriber section of the Discord. And we will be recording it tomorrow. So if, if you want to hang out with me tomorrow and you have a problem with your save, that's a good way to do it too. But you got your copy pasta. Thank you guys uh, for a great stream. And I will see you on Thursday. Bye, guys. Catch you later. Hope you have a good one. All right. Word of the day. There we go. Oh, kismet. 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 Uh, K-I-S-M-E-T. Kismet refers to a power that is believed to control what happens in the future. It is synonymous with both fate and destiny. Okay. From the moment we met, we felt connected. We knew it was Kismet. Wow, that like rhymed too. Who just subbed? Goose yourself. Thank you for the 29 months. <laughs> See you guys at the end of another stream for another word of the day.